Dem go Luke chapter 13 verse 14. Come on. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Read. And said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, and, and in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. You say, listen, we have six days where they can be healed. <coughs> not on the Sabbath. So now you're sick. Your mother, your father, your grandmother is sick. They said, no, she must sit over there. Wait on the morrow. Go ahead. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, mm. does not each one of you on the Sabbath loot his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to water him? Exactly. Mm. For their own they was doing this, but when the rest of the nation was doing they're like, no. Read. Really? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham. Stop right there. This is the daughter of Abraham, man. Read. Whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from the bond. From this bond. From this bond on the Sabbath day. Mm, go ahead. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. They were ashamed. Come on. And all the people rejoiced for, for all the glorious things that were done by him. All praises to the Most High. So, yes, therefore, it is lawful. It's good to do well on the Sabbath. Shalom, brothers and sisters online. Happy Sabbath to you all. Okay, take note, take note. We made it to another Sabbath day. Let's give the Lord a hand. <laughs> oh, praise to the Most High. We made it, we made it, man. Who would have thought? We made it to another Sabbath, man. The Lord is with us. The Lord is gracious unto us, man. The Lord is merciful unto us. Okay, now, let's begin. Um, so, today's topic is called, Remember the Sabbath Day. I'm going to go into the Sabbath. That's today's topic. Remember the Sabbath day because we have forgotten it as a nation. All over the world. Yeah, Israel is waking up now, but the majority of our people are still asleep to this. Okay? But before I go there, before I go there, give me the book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Sarak 44 verse 1. Let's start there. Sarak 44 verse 1. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44 verse 1. Come on. Let us now praise the famous man. And our fathers that began us. Read. The Lord has wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. Come on. Such as did their rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding, and declaring prophecy. Come on. Leaders of the people by their counsel. He says they are what now? Leaders of the people by their counsel. What you need to understand is that the most high God raises up leaders in Israel. Because right now we have no leaders in our nation. You understand? The people, the, the people, they look up to politicians, they look up to, they look up to pastors and celebrities and soccer players and actors as the leaders and role models. Those are not the leaders of the people. Those are not the people to follow. But our people are following them. That's why we have to read the Bible, teach the Bible, apply it, and show the people how we must conduct ourselves so they can see the new leaders in Israel that the Lord is raising up. Read again, verse 4. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verse 4. Come on. Leaders of the people by their counsel. You see how you become leaders of the people? By your counsels. Read. And by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. No, 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 no. By their many acting jobs that they show on TV. And by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. By the many goals that they score when they play soccer and rugby. And by their knowledge of learning. By their knowledge of learning. Knowledge of learning. You learn, you see, leaders are readers. They study. They apply what is written in this Bible. You understand? Those are the real leaders of the nation. When you examine the other nations, they don't use the politicians as the leaders. The politicians are not leaders, men of the people. The other nations, the Moabites, which is the Chinese, Iromites, which is so-called white people, they don't use actors and soccer players as leaders. It's only in our nation when we do that. You understand? We need to change that. Go ahead. Leaders of the people by their counsel. Come on. And by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. Right. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. 
So what are they using to instruct the people? What are they using to lead the nation? Give me that in uh, Romans chapter 2. Romans 2 is as wise and eloquent in their instructions. What are the instructions that they are giving to the people? Get that in Romans 2. Romans the second chapter. Okay. Romans chapter 2. Read verse 18. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Watch this. And know it is will. And know it is what? And know it is will. So we must know the will of the Father. Come on. And approve the things that are more excellent. Mm. Be instructed out of the law. You see what our forefathers used? They used the law to instruct the people. They didn't use their feelings. They didn't use the influence of being actors and soccer players and celebrities. They used the laws of God to instruct the people because that's how we, our nation will be exalted. The only way our nation will be exalted is by the laws of God. Understand that. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. Um, read verse 34. This is how our nation is going to be. This is how the nation, our nation, is going to be exalted. Not by the number of actors and celebrities and soccer players that and, and social media influencers. No. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 34. Come on. Righteousness exalted the nation. No, no. Social media influencers. Righteousness exalted the nation. You see that? Celebrities. Righteousness exalted the nation. You see what's going to exalt our nation? Righteousness. Not, such, not Facebook or TikTok influencers. Mm -mm. Righteousness will exalt our nation to its former glory. Go ahead. But sin is a reproach to any people. You see what TikTok influencers do? You understand? They are a reproach to our nation. These soccer players and celebrities and, um, you know, what do they call them? Podcasters. They are not exalting our nation to honor and glory, man. They are exalting our nation to reproach and despicableness, if that's even a word. You understand? So they are not bringing our nation back to honor and glory. No. They are pushing out what? They are, they are, they are promoting, um, what is this called? They are promoting mujol. That's what they are promoting, man. They are, they are promoting baby mamas and baby daddy. That's what they are promoting. So righteousness will exalt a nation. Let's get what righteousness is. Get that in Deuteronomy 6. You understand? This is what's going to exalt our nation, man. Back to his former glory. Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. Let's get that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Come on. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. Go ahead. If we observe to do all these commandments. If, when we observe to do the commandments of the Mosai. Before the Lord our God. As he has commanded. Now go back to Proverbs 14. This is what's going to exalt our nation, man. The righteousness of this Bible. As it is written. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 34. Read. Righteousness exalted the nation. The keeping of God's commandments is how our nation will be exalted back to his former glory. Back to his former honor as the most said God ordained from the beginning. Okay. Now go back to Sarah 44. Sarah 44. Read verse 4 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 4. Read. Leaders of the people by their counsel. You see how we lead our nation? By the counsels that were found in this Bible. Read. And by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. Good for the people. Come on. Wise and eloquent in their instruction. In their what? In their instruction. Because they instructed the people out of God's laws. That's how our nation will be exalted, man. It will not be exalted by foolishness. If we want to return back to our former glory, that the nations will put some respect on our nation, we must return back to the laws of God. Get that in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Read. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Come on. But to fear the Lord thy God. But to what now? But to fear the Lord thy God. Ray. To walk in all his ways. To do what? To walk in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. Read on. To love him. Mm. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. You see, the first thing is fear. It's not love. Mm -mm. The most God says, the thing that he requires of us is not love. That's, no. 
Fear is the first thing that the Lord requires of us. We must fear his judgment. He is the ancient of days, man. He is our Father which is in heaven. Read that verse again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. Go ahead. And now Israel, mm. what, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Come on. But to fear the Lord thy God. That's the first thing that the Lord requires of us. We must fear him. Go ahead. To walk in all his ways mm. and to love him. You see that to fear him, to walk in all his ways, then love is the third one on the list. Go ahead. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul. Come on, next verse. To keep the commandments of the Lord. You see what that means? To keep the commandments of the Lord your God. Read on. And his statue, mm. which I commanded thee this day. No, which day. I suggested to you this day. Which I commanded thee this day. Because the most said God is, is dictatorship. Total dictatorship. There's no democracy in this Bible. It's total dictatorship. That's what you need to understand, men and women and children have been here. You know, and brothers and sisters online, the most high God is, doesn't care about your feelings. You understand? It's about total dictatorship when it comes to his laws, his statutes, and his commandments. Repent or die. That's the most, that's, that, is, that is objective. You understand? So give me the book of Deuteronomy 4. Read verse 5 now. Start of verse 1. We're going to jump. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 1. Watch this. Now therefore, hearken, O Israel, mm. unto the statutes and unto the judgment Read. which I teach you, for to do them, that he may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord thy God, which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. You see that? So the most high God is commanding us to walk in all his ways. Now jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. Mm. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me. Come on. That ye should do so in the land with the ye go to possess it. Read. Keep therefore and do them. Keep therefore and do them. Keep the commandment and do them. How can keep and do? Go ahead. For this is your wisdom. For this is our what? For this is your wisdom. You see when you want wisdom? That's why when you read about our forefathers of old, it says they were wise and eloquent in their instructions. What gave them wisdom? The laws of the Most High God of heaven and earth. Read. Keep therefore and do them. keep therefore and do the commandments. But this is your wisdom mm. and your understanding. And your what? And your understanding. And your understanding. Come on. In the sight of, of the nation. In the sight of the what? In the sight of the nation. You see that? So these nations, they must they come, the time will come when the nations will see us keeping God's commandments. It's starting now. Israel is waking up. So the nations are beginning to notice that Israel is on the way. It's on the rise. You understand? Go ahead. We shall hear all these statues mm. and say. So the nations will hear all the statues that are in this Bible. How? Because we're going to be in the streets. We're going to be on social media teaching the people the laws of God so our people may repent. So the nations are going to be watching us. Because they have to watch us to see how close is the Lord coming back. Because they have to see. There must be a sign. He says the only sign you're going to get is the sign of the prophet Jonas. Get that for me. Hold this. We're coming back. You understand? Give me that in Matthew 12, verse 38. The book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 38. Come on. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, mm. Master, what would... No, no. We would see a sign from thee. We would see a sign from thee. Oh, praises. Come on. But he answered and said unto them, mm. An evil and adulterous generation. You see what he's saying? An evil and adulterous generation because they wanted a sign. They wanted something tangible. They, because why? They lacked faith. Read. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. They do what? Seeketh after a sign. Come on. And they shall no sign be given to it. Mm. But the sign of the prophet John. You see what he said? It says, but they shall no sign be given unto them except the sign of the prophet Jonah. So you would have to know what was the purpose of Jonah when he walked the earth. What did he do? So that you can understand what Christ is making reference to here. Let's get the book of Jonah real quick. Jonah 3 and 1. Read that. 3 and 1. The book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 1. Listen good. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Read. 
Arise. Mm. Go unto Nineveh. Go do what now? Go unto Nineveh. Come on. That great city. That what now? That great city. Ray. And preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So what was the command that was given to the prophet Jonas? Read verse 2 again. The book of Jonah chapter 3 verse 2. Mm. Arise. Go unto Nineveh. That great city. And preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Go ahead. So Jonah arose Ray. and went unto Nineveh mm. according to the word of the Lord. Ray. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city mm. of three days' journey. Go ahead. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. Ray. And he cried. He what? And he cried. He taught. Come on. And said, mm. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So he's prophesying of what's going to happen to Nineveh. So he's teaching. So the Lord says the only sign you're going to see is the sign of the prophet John. Outside of that, I'm going to give you nothing. You understand? Because he understood they had no faith. So go back to Matthew 12, verse 39 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 39. Ray. But he answered and said unto them, mm. an evil and adulterous generation Come on. seeketh after a sign. They do what? Seeketh after a sign. They are seeking for a sign. Read. And they shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet John. But the what now? But the sign of the prophet John. That's the only sign, Christ says. That's the, the only sign you're going to see. You understand? So what Moses was saying, go back to Deuteronomy 4 again now. Deuteronomy chapter 4, read verse 5 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Come on. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, mm. even as the Lord my God commanded me, that he should do so in the land with the ego to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of, of the nations. You see that in the sight of the nations, because the nations would have to see us keeping the commandments, teaching the commandments, and guess what? Us as a nation appearing righteous in the sight of the law, because we're doing what the Most High God commanded us. Go ahead. We shall hear all these statues. How are they going to hear all these statues? Because of the sign of the prophet Jonas. Read. And say, mm. surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What verse you want? Verse 6. Sir. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. Go ahead. For this is your wisdom mm. and your understanding. Go ahead. In the sight of the nation. Come on. We shall hear all these statutes and say, mm. surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Do the nation say that about us right now? No. Because we are now, we are in reproach right now. That's why our people, they are saying, no, get the bag, get the bag. That's the only thing you hear on social media. You understand? Get the bag, get the bag. There's another thing. Mm, there's a term they use now. Um, I'm leveling up. That's what you're hearing now. You understand? I'm leveling up. What does that mean exactly? They have no idea what they're saying, man. They say, no, I'm on a level. I'm leveling up. What the hell are you talking about? I'm leveling up. If you ask them, what does that mean exactly? What are, what are we, no, no, I'm getting the bag. I'm getting, that's what they mean. So the nations will not say this is a wise and an understanding people when you keep saying I'm leveling up. To what? To be a reproach on social media? To be a podcaster? Everybody is opening a podcast now. You understand? And they are not talking about anything that builds our nation back up. They are all, they are, what are they doing? Give me Leviticus 19, verse 16. I'm going to show you. All these podcasts, when you re, when you listen to these podcasts, this is what they are talking about today. You understand? There's nothing you can learn from these podcasts, man. Because their, their knowledge and information is not to build our nation back up, but it's to do this. Read what you got. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 16. Listen good. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer. Among thy people. You see that? You must not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people. What are they pushing? Mugozi. Gossip. That's what they're pushing, man. You understand? They'll be talking about that one's relationship. No, those one got divorced. Now this one, you see that? That one got fired from that job, from that TV gig. He got, listen, nothing they say is to build our nation. Look at Barkiman's sister, Dinora Naga. When she went on that podcast, what did she say? She said that the, the, the children that she's, she's, the baby she's popping is prizes that she's getting from all these baby daddies that she's dealing with. So when young sisters are listening to that, what are they going to do? 
You understand that? So they are not pushing anything to build our nation back up. You understand? They are adding sin upon sin, bringing a reproach to our nation, man. Okay? So what verse you at? Verse 16, sir. Okay, go back. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 16. No, 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 go back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. I just wanted to give an example. Okay? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 6. Read. Keep therefore and do them. Mm. For this is your understand is your wisdom and your understanding. In the sight of the nations, we shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You see that they are wise and they have understanding of what needs to be what needs to be done. Because wisdom, how we get wisdom, we keep the commandment. Get that in Sarah 1. When it says, if you desire wisdom, keep the commandments. Sarah chapter 1. Read verse 26. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 26. Come on. If thou desire wisdom. If you desire wisdom, what were we commanded to do? Keep the commandment. Do what? Keep the commandment. No, be a social media influencer. Keep the commandment. You see that thing? No, go to the Christian church and give the biggest money. Keep the commandment. Keep the commandments of the Most High God. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. You see that the Lord will give you wisdom when you keep his commandments. Okay? So that's why it says this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Not only are they, but the understanding will receive, will understand what is the fate of the nations on this earth. What is our purpose upon this earth? What's going to happen to us when the Lord returns? What are we supposed to do to prepare for the second coming of our king? We're going to have that understanding, man. We will know how to move around these demonic nations that are around us. We will know all that. But the social media influencers, they are not going to wake us up to any of that. You understand? Because why? They are protecting their bag. Because they are leveling up. Don't forget, bear. These people are leveling up. You understand? So go back. Deuteronomy 4. Read verse 7 now. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 7. Come on. For what nation is there so great? Mm. Who has God so nigh unto them? You see that the, the nations will be having these discussions among them. What nation is so great? Because they're not going to think of us as niggers and speaks at duckies and kafirs no more. You understand? Read. Really? As the Lord our God mm. is in all things that we call upon him for. You see that? Read. Really? Watch this. And what nation is there so great mm. that has statutes and judgment so righteous? So righteous as what? So righteous as all this law. You see what brings forth righteousness? The law. Read. Which I said before you this day. Mm. Only take heed to thyself. He says only take heed to thyself. Meaning what? Examine yourself. That's what he's saying. Read. Only take heed to thyself. Come on. And keep thy soul diligently. And keep your soul diligently. Meaning what? You must keep. That's why King David was praying in the prayer. Get that in Psalm 6. He says, keep your soul diligently. Psalms the sixth chapter. If you're listening to the prayer, this is what King David was saying, man. Psalm chapter six. Um, read verse three. Watch this. Psalms chapter six, verse three. Come on. My soul is also so vexed. Mm -hmm. But thou, O Lord, how long? Meaning, how long is my soul going to be so vexed? Go ahead. Return, O Lord, mm -hmm. deliver my soul. What did he say? Deliver my soul. Deliver my soul. Come on. Or save me for, for thy mercy's sake. He says, save me for thy mercy's sake. So guess what? That's why it says, keep thy soul diligently. That's how, how do we do it? We must cry to the Lord to have mercy upon us when we use his grace to get our minds right before his son returns. So go back. You told me the fourth chapter. Let's go back there. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Read verse 9 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9. Read. Only take heed to thyself mm. and keep thy soul diligent. Go ahead. And thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Because the things which our eyes have seen, our forefathers have seen, when we were delivered out of Egypt. You understand? The miracles, the wonders that the Lord did when he spoiled and did destroyed the Egyptians, our enemies. Go ahead. And lest they depart from thy heart. You see that? Lest they depart from thine heart. Because guess what? 
it's obvious that these things departed from our hearts. That's why we don't remember that we are the Jews of this Bible. Read. And lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. But teach them thy son and thy son's son. When you remember, teach them your sons and your grandchildren. That's what he's saying because what? He, the Lord will bring all things to our remembrance whatsoever I have said unto thee. Give me that in John 14, 26. John 14, verse 26. Watch this. The of John, chapter 14, verse 26. Come on. But the comforter. But the what? But the comforter. The comforter is the spirit of Christ. He does the comforter. Go ahead. Which is the Holy Ghost. Which is what now? Which is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Whom the Father will send in my name. Ray. He shall teach you all things mm. and bring all things to your remembrance. Because we would forget. That's why in Exodus 20 verse 8 he says, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Because in these last days we would forget the Sabbath day. Read. Whatsoever I have said unto you. When I was yet with you. You understand? That's what he was saying unto us, man. Now go back to Sirach now. Sirach chapter 44. Go back there. Sirach 44 verse 4 again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse 4. Pray. Leaders of the people by their account. You see that? These leaders of the people is our forefathers that began us in verse 1 and 2. Read. And by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. Their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. Now let's let's go into that. Jump down to verse, uh, jump down to verse seventeen. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter forty-four, verse seventeen. We're gonna read about these famous men. You understand? Come on. Noah was found perfect and righteous. Noah was what now? Noah was found perfect and righteous. Because that's what in the Christian church, what did they teach us? That garbage demonic religion. They taught us that nobody's perfect. Read again, verse seventeen. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 17. Ray. Noah was found perfect. What Noah was what? Was found perfect. Our forefather Noah was found perfect. Because they say no, Christ was the only one that was perfect. That's a lie. You understand that? Because they don't want our people to strive to keep the commandments, to enter into the state gate. They don't want our people to strive to enter into the state gate. That's why they say Christ was the only one that could keep these commandments so that you don't have to. That's the lie they push out there. You understand that? Read again verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse 17. Read. Noah was found perfect and righteous. Stop. Hold this. Give me that in Psalm. Give me that in 1 Kings 8.61. Let's see what it means to be perfect, man. And Noah was not the only one. Christ was not the only one, man. Because all these prophets, our forefathers of old, they were all moving in the spirit of Christ. Okay? 1 Kings 8, 61. First book of Kings, chapter 8, verse 61. Read. Let your heart therefore be perfect. Your heart is your mind. Go ahead. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. Read. To walk in his statutes. To do what? To walk in his statutes. Read. And to keep his commandments as at this day. You see that? So you see what brings perfection? The keeping of God's laws. And in the world, because the world is full of contradictions, man. Because in the world they say practice makes perfect. How can you say practice makes perfect, but you say nobody's perfect? That's what they say. Because the world is on crack. You understand? Everybody be high on Nyaube in the world. These, these podcasters, these social media influencers, they are high. You understand? Read that again, verse 61. First book of Kings, chapter 8, verse 61. Come on. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God mm. to walk in his statutes. Go ahead. And to keep his commandments as, it, as at this day. As at this day. You see, in the Old Testament, they tell you what it means to be perfect because they talked about perfection. They say, our forefather Noah was found perfect and righteous in the sight of the Most High God. You understand that? And he wasn't the only one. Give me that in the book of Job real quick. I'm still dealing with, I'm still on topic. I just want to touch on a few things because I delve deeper into the topic. You understand? Job 1. Job the first chapter, our forefathers. You understand? You know what I want? Job chapter 1. Yes, Start with 1. Yes, sir. The book of Job chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. 
There was a man in the land of Uz mm. whose name was Job. Go ahead. And that man was perfect. Was what? And that man was perfect. That man was perfect. Come on. And upright. You see that perfect and righteous. That's what upright means. Righteous. Go ahead. And one that feared God mm -hmm. and eschewed evil. That's it right there. So I fought for the job. And guess what? Because you might there might be an Edomite online. You understand? Say, nah. But Job, how do you know he was black? Give Job 30 verse 30. Let's shut the dragon down with this. Read that for me. Job 30 verse 30. The book of Job chapter 30 verse 30. Read. My skin is black upon me. There it is. Boom. Job is a black man. That's our forefather right there. Read again, read again. The book of Job chapter 30 verse 30. Read. My skin is black upon me. Because the bewitching of the white man through Christianity, they're going to say, no, that is condition. Black is a color. Black is not a condition. Black is a color. Read again, read again. The book of Job chapter 30 verse 30. Read. My skin is black upon me. My skin is what? My skin is black upon me. You see that? So Job, our forefather, was black and he was perfect. So go back to Sirach 44 verse 17 again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse 17. Read. Noah was found perfect and righteous. And upright. The same way our forefather Job was found. To be perfect and upright. Go ahead. In the time of right. That's during the time of the flood in Genesis, the sixth chapter. Go ahead. He was taken in exchange for the world. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? No, the world was destroyed and Noah was delivered with his family. Because he was found perfect and upright in the sight of the Lord. Go ahead. Therefore was he left as a remnant unto the earth. Mm, he was what now? Therefore was he left as a remnant unto the earth. You see this Bible is beautiful, man. He was left as a what now? Therefore, therefore was he left as a remnant. As a what? As a remnant. As a what? As a remnant. As a remnant. Mm. Go ahead. Unto the earth. You see that? He was left as a remnant. Guess who's going to be delivered? The remnant of Israel. That's what's going to get delivered in these last days, man. You understand that? So the things that happened at four time, they were written for our land. So in these last days, not all Israel will get delivered, but only the remnant. You understand that? So that right there was a what now? A similitude to also let you know what's going to happen in these last days. You understand that? The remnant will be delivered. Understand that. Okay? Go ahead. When the flood came, mm. an everlasting covenant was made with him. That all flesh should perish no more by the flood. You see that? Because our forefather Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. Give me Genesis 6 verse 8 and 9. Genesis 6 verse 8 and 9. So we must praise these famous men. That's a commandment. We're not going to stop talking about our forefathers, men. Because these are great men. These were great men and they are back in these last days. Read that. Genesis 6 verse 8. The book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 8. Come on. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Ray. These are the generations of Noah. Mm. Noah was a just man. And perfect. And what? And perfect. And what? And perfect. And perfect. Come on. In his generation. Ray. And Noah walked with God. He walked with the most high God. He kept God's commandments. You see that? He was perfect. So go back, Surah 44. Surah 44. Read verse 19 now. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 19. Come on. Abraham was a father of many people. Because this right here, what we're reading here, this is where Christians are like, they fall off the horse right here. Read again. Abraham was a great father of many people. He was a what now? Abraham was a great father of many people. By the way, Abraham, our forefather, was a black man. You understand? Abraham was a black man. Understand that. Read. In glory was there none like unto him. In what now? In glory was there none like unto him. Go ahead. Who kept the law of the Mosai. What did our forefather Abraham do? Who kept the law of the Mosai. He kept the commandments of the Mosai God. Abraham kept the commandments. He wasn't a friend of the Lord because he was just Abraham. No, he kept the laws of God. Read. Who kept the law of the Mosai. Mm. And was in covenant with him. Because of the commandment. That he was given in Genesis, the 17th chapter. Read. He established the covenant in his flesh. In his what? In his flesh. In his flesh. When he was commanded to circumcise and to circumcise his children. 
You understand? Not only that, but in his children. That's why it says in his flesh. Read. And when he was true, mm. he was found faithful. He was what? He was found faithful. He was found faithful. He says he what? Read verse 19 one more again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 19. Read. Abraham was a great father of many people. Of what now? Of many people. So now he says, verse 19 says, of many people. Now read verse 21. Listen to the word that is used here. Go ahead. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he assured him by an oath. By a promise, by a decree. Come on. That he would bless the nations in his seed. That he would bless the nations in his seed. Read. And that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth. Mm. And exalt his seed as the stars. And exalt his seed that are called people in verse 19. In verse 19. And nations in verse 21. Read. And cause them to inherit from sea to sea mm. and from the river unto the utmost part of the land. Watch this. Give me Genesis 12, verse 1. Because now they're going to be saying, yeah, but you know, we've got Ishmael. To hell with Ishmael. That's the Arabs. The most High God didn't choose them. To hell with Esau and Eromites because the Lord didn't choose them either. You understand? Genesis 12 and 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 1. Read. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, yeah, to Abram, go ahead. Get thee out of the country, mm. and from thy kindred, Read. and from thy father's house, Read. and to a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will do what now? And I will make of thee a great nation. That's what we just read. And I will make of thee a great nation. He's talking to our forefather Abraham here. Go ahead. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great, mm. and thou shalt be a blessing. Go ahead. And I will bless them that bless thee. Mm. And curse him that curses thee. Come on. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. You see right here. You see Christians they love this verse. Because it says in thee shall what now? And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Shall all families of the earth be blessed. They say you see. All families of the earth. That's white people, that's Chinese, that's Japanese, that's Arabs. Let's understand what it means. Genesis 17. Let's start with verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 1. Come on. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, mm. the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Read. Walk before me. Walk before me. And be thou perfect. That was a commandment. Be thou perfect. That's a commandment. So don't be listening to these Christians that don't read this Bible. They say nobody can be perfect. And the Lord is commanding our forefather Abraham. He says, be thou perfect. Read. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. Mm -hmm. And I will multiply thy seed. I will multiply thee exceedingly. Go ahead. And Abraham fell on his face. Mm -hmm. And God talked with him saying. Watch this. As for me, behold. My covenant is with thee. Read. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. He's saying the same thing here. You shall be a father of many nations. Go ahead. Verse 5. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abraham. Mm. But thy name shall be called Abraham. Go ahead. Shall be Abraham. And thy name shall be Abraham. Come on. For a father of many nations have I made thee. You see that's what that Abraham. A father of many nations. So guess what? The Lord gave change our forefather Abraham's name. Remember, it says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Keep reading. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Mm. And I will make nations of thee. Go ahead. And kings shall come out of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. Come on. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And I seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. Go ahead. To be a God unto thee, mm -hmm. and to thy seed after thee. Come on. I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, or the land of Canaan. Right there, right there is letting you know. He's not talking about all nations. The, ch all, not the children that came out of Abraham, not all of them were given the land of Canaan. So the children on this earth, the nations on this earth that was given the land of Canaan is the 12 tribes of Israel. But let's keep reading. Go ahead. And I will make, I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Go ahead. The land wherein thou art a stranger. Mm. 
or in the land of Canaan. Read. For an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. Keep reading. Come on. And God said unto Abraham, mm. Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore. Thou and thy seed after thee in thou, their generations. Thou and thy what? Thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. So now the Lord is speaking to our forefather Abraham. He's showing him the prophecy that will come hereafter. That the children that you're going to have, there's going to be the chosen ones. There's going to be those that I will not choose, even though they come out of their loins. You understand that? Jump down to verse 15. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 15. Watch this. And God said unto Abraham, mm. as for Sarai thy wife. Now he's talking to Abraham's wife, our foremother Sarai. Read. Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, mm. but Sarah shall her name be. But Sarah shall her name be. Go ahead. But Sarah shall her name be. Mm. And I will bless her. Read. And give thee a son also of her. And give thee a son also of her. So he's letting our forefather Abraham know. Listen. Then the kings and nations that shall come out of thee, you're going to have those kings and nations with your wife, Sarah. Remember, this is Genesis, the 17th chapter, right? Read Genesis 16 and 1. We're coming back. Genesis 16 and 1. Read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 16, verse 1. Read. Now Sarah, Sarai, Abraham's wife, bare him no children. Mm. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, Whose name was Hagar. You, you see that? No, no, she had a wife. He had a wife. What did he say? And she had an handmaid. No, a wife. And, and she had an handmaid. That's it. Go ahead. An Egyptian mm. whose name was Hagar. Go ahead. And Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. Meaning what? Hagar is going to be a surrogate. You understand? Hagar is a surrogate. She wasn't a wife. Okay, go ahead. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Now, go back now. Genesis 17, verse 15 again. Now we already we know the kings and nations that will came out of that will come out of Abraham that will be blessed upon this earth will not come out of Hagar. So that's out. Neither will they come out of Keturah. Remember, after Sarah died. Keturah, Abraham married Keturah. You understand? Come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 15. Read. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Read. And I will bless her, mm. and give thee a son also of her. Come on. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. She shall be what now? She shall be a mother of nations. Remember, our forefather Abraham said, he shall be a father of many nations. Our foremother Sarah is being told also, she shall be a mother of many nations. Go ahead. Kings of people shall be of her. You see that? Kings of people shall be of her. Mm. So, listen. These are the blessings that are coming upon our forefather Abraham and his wife Sarah, our foremother. You see that, right? Now give me the book of Genesis 35 now. Genesis 35. Read verse 9. The book of Genesis chapter 35 verse 9. Watch this. And God appeared unto Jacob again. Hold on. Now, now, because we just skipped the history of our forefather Isaac. You notice that, right? We talk about, remember, now Ishmael is already put out. He's not counted on this wise. So guess what? The child, the child that our forefather, um, the Mosa will choose, is not Ishmael. Is who? Isaac. Genesis 17, 19, real quick. Let's get that real quick. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 19. I'm going over this for a reason. Because you see, Ishmael, the Arabs, they cannot stop with this lie that they are pushing throughout the earth. And the media and the world is in agreement with that. You understand? Read it. The book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 19. Come on. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Come on. And I will establish my covenant with him. Stop. I will do what? 
and I will establish my covenant with him. So the Lord says his covenant will be with, our, with what? The son of Abraham that he will choose. Go ahead. For an everlasting covenant. For a what now? For an everlasting covenant. Ray. And with his seed after him. Uh -huh. And. Hold on. Verse 19. One more again. Read it again. The book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 19. Come on. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. Ray. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Thou shalt what? And thou shalt call his name Isaac. You shall call his name Isaac. Read. And I will establish my covenant with him. So who's the chosen? Isaac, not Ishmael. Go ahead. For an everlasting covenant. Mm. And with his seed after him. Go ahead. And with his what? And with his seed after him. With his what? And with his seed after him. So the seed of Isaac now. That's what's in question. You understand? So Ishmael has already been sidelined. He's a bastard child. You understand? Now, Genesis 35 verse 9. The book of Genesis, chapter 35, verse 9. Read. And God appeared unto Jacob again. Unto who? Unto Jacob again. Read. When he, when he came out of Padan Aram. Now, now, you know what? Read Genesis 35 and 1. The Let me of, twist the knife a little bit. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 35, verse 1. Come on. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make thee an altar, and, and make there an altar unto God. That appear unto thee when thou fledgest from the face of Esau thy brother. Of what now? Of Esau thy brother. You see? Esau. Esau your brother. So the Lord is dealing with Jacob. Right here is letting you know. He's dealing with Jacob, not Esau, his brother. The son of Isaac. Because he's the son of Isaac also. The same way Ishmael was the son of our forefather Abraham. But he wasn't the chosen. You understand? Because Ishmael is the father of the Arabs today. And Esau is the father of the entire Caucasian race today, including Jewish people, white people who call themselves Jewish. You understand? The Bible calls them Amalek. You understand? Okay. Now jump down to verse 9. The book of Genesis, chapter 35, verse 9. And God appeared unto Jacob again. No, no, unto Esau. Unto Jacob unto again. Unto Jacob again. Come on. When he came out of Padan Aram and blessed him. And what now? And blessed him. You remember it says, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Our forefather Isaac was blessed, son of Abraham. Our forefather Jacob was blessed, son of Isaac. Go ahead. And God said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel. But what? But Israel. But Israel. Go ahead. Shall be thy name. Mm. And he called his name Israel. And he called his name Israel. Go ahead. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. This is the same thing that he commanded our forefather Abraham. Read. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. Mm. And kings shall come out of thy loins. Stop. Where did we just read this, man? Where did you just read this? Go back to Genesis 17. The same blessing that was given to our forefather Abraham is given to our forefather Jacob, whose name is now Israel. Okay, go back to Genesis 17. Read verse 6 again. The book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 6. Read. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Uh -huh. And I will make nations of thee. I will do what? And I will make nations of thee. Read. And kings shall come out of thee. Stop. Where did we read this? We read this in Genesis, the 35th chapter. Now jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. Uh -huh. And I will bless her mm. and, give, and give thee a son also of her. Isaac, go ahead. Yea, I will bless her mm. and she shall be a mother of nations. Read. Kings of people shall be of her. There it is. You see this? Now go back to Genesis 35. You see, listen. We understand this Bible, man. Christians will not confound us with that demonic religion that they are learning every Sunday. You understand? The doctrine of Satan. Read what you got. The Genesis 35, read verse 10 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 35, verse 10. Read. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob. Come on. But Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Come on. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. Mm. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. Ray. 
and kings shall come out of thy loins. You see what he's saying? So the same, this is the same blessing we just read. You understand that? Now get go back to Genesis 12. Because I know some Christians right now they be spinning. Genesis 12, read verse 3 again. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Come on. And I will bless them that bless thee. Mm. And curse him that curses thee. Watch this. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. You see that? So now we are, we're doing a process of elimination. Isaac. Now Jacob. You understand? The children that will come out of Jacob's loins shall be blessed. You see that, right? Go back to Genesis 35. One more again. The book of Genesis, chapter 35, verse 11. Read. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Mm. Be fruitful and multiply. Come on. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. Read. And kings shall come out of thy loins. Watch this. Come on. And the land which I gave Abraham. The land which I what? And the land which I gave Abraham. So which land was given to our forefather Abraham? The land of Canaan. We just read it, man. Read. And Isaac. And what? And Isaac. And Isaac. So the land that I gave to Abraham, the land that I gave to our forefather Isaac, come on. To thee I will give it. To thee. Who's the thee? Jacob. Go ahead. And to thy seed after thee. And to thy what? And to thy seed after thee. Come on. Will I give the land? Will I what now? Will I give the land? You see what he said? And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. So the seed that came out of Jacob's loins, that is the 12 tribes of Israel. Now give me Exodus 1 and 1. See, when you do this, you see Christian says, yeah, but you don't have to read all these scriptures. That's what they say. You understand? Because they, don't, they are lazy to read this book. Now read it. Exodus 1 and 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, uh -huh. which came into it, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Now read the verse again, verse 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. Now these are the names of the children of Israel. Of the what now? Now these are the names of the children of Israel. Who's Israel? Jacob. Now these are the names of the children of Israel. Okay, come on. Which came into Egypt. Mm. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Stop right there. Now, I need you to pay close attention here. Don't lose the thought. Read that verse again, verse 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 1. Listen good. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel. These are the names of the children of our, of the children of our forefather Jacob. Okay, come on. Which came into Egypt. Which did what now? Which came into Egypt. They came into Egypt. They came into Egypt. Go ahead. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Now stop right there. Remember it says, which came into Egypt, right? Now, go back to Genesis 12. The book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 3. Listen good. And I will bless them that bless thee. Mm. And curse him that curses thee. He's talking to our forefather Abraham. Listen good, come on. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Shall what now? Shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now give me Amos 3 and 1. Pay close attention. You understand? Because when you're on the streets, you don't go through all this. Just go to Amos 3 from Genesis 12. You understand that? Because Amos will tell you, our forefather, who is the families of the earth that will be blessed. Now read what you got. The book of Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Read. Yet this way that the Lord has, has spoken against you, all children of Israel. All children of what? All children of Israel. All children of Israel. Go ahead. Against the whole family. Against the what? Against the whole family. Read. Which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Listen good. Say, mm. you only. You only. You, when he says against the whole family, meaning all 12 tribes. Read. You only. Mm -hmm. Have I known of all the families of the earth. Of what now? Of all the families of the earth. Read. Therefore. I will punish you for all your iniquity. Now go back to Genesis 12 verse 3. The book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 3. Come on. And I will bless them that bless thee. Mm. And curse him that curses thee. Read. And indeed shall all families of the earth be blessed. So who is that family? Who is all the families of the earth that will be blessed in Abraham? It's not all nations on earth. It's the 12 tribes of Israel. Exodus 1 and 1. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 1. Come on. 
Now these are the names of the children of Israel mm. which came into Egypt. Which did what? Which came into Egypt. The same nations that was delivered out of Egypt, when you read the book of Amos, that's the families that the Lord will bless upon this earth that are the seed of Abraham. Read. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Mm. You see that? So these nations that we read about, the children of Israel that came into Egypt, is the same children that was delivered out of Egypt, which is the, all the families of the earth that would be blessed. So what, what Amos is saying, he's giving us the answer to Genesis 12, the third chapter, the third verse. He's giving us the answer. You understand that? That was a precept upon precept. Okay? Give me First Chronicles 2 verse 1. First book of Chronicles chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. These are the sons of Israel. Mm. Reuben. Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. Come on. Dan, Joseph, and Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. You see what we're reading here? These are the sons of Israel. Guess what? What we're reading here, these are the families of the earth that the Lord will bless that came out of Abraham. You understand that? Yes, First Chronicles 1. The first book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 34. Come on. And Abraham began Isaac. Mm. The sons of Isaac. Esau and Israel. Watch this. The sons of Esau, Eliphaz, Ruel, and Jehush, Jalam, and Korah. Mm. The sons of Eliphaz, Timon, mm. and Omer. So Timon does Germans, the Germans of today. Go ahead. And Omer, mm. Zephi, and Gatam. Watch this. Kenaz, mm. and Timna, mm. and Amalek. And who? And Amalek. Amalek does Jewish people. Amalek is the, the reason why the Lord is writing it right here. So we know. You understand? You know why this is important? I'm going to show you why this is important. Jump up to verse 24. I'm going to show you why he's doing it. That's book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 24. Come on. Shem, Afakshed, and Shelah. It says Shem, Afakshed, Shelah. These are the children that comes out of what? Shem. The chosen seed line of Shem. Watch this. Go ahead. Iba, Peleg, and Reu. Read. Serak, Nahor, and Terah. Come on. Abraham. The same is Abraham. The same is Abraham. Now, now, you see what we're reading here? He's letting you know. Now jump down to verse 35 again. That's book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 35. Notice. Remember, the children that come out of Shem, Ishmael is one of them. And Esau is one of them also. You understand? Meaning what? The great, great, grandchildren of that come out of Shem. Meaning the nations which are Shemitic. Okay, go ahead. First book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 35. The sons of Esau, Eliphaz, Rehul, and Jehush, and Jalam, and Korah. The sons of Eliphaz, Timon, and Omer, Zephi, Gatam, Kenes and Timna and Amalek. You see why this is important? Because Shem is mentioned up there in verse 24. Because when you rebuke Jewish people, also known as Amalek in the Bible, they say you are what? You are anti-Semitic. But guess what? But they are Shemites. So are we. So is the Ishmaelites. They are also Shemites. This comes out of Shem. That's it on there. Go back. Psalm 44. Uh, read verse. Read verse 21. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 21. Come on. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his in his seed. That he would bless the nations in his seed. Who are those nations? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's the nations. 12 of them. Read. And that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth, and exalt his seed as the stars, and cause them to inherit from, from sea to sea, mm. and from the river unto the utmost part of the land. You see what we're reading here in verse 21? Is what we read in the Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, when he's giving us the layoff of the land of the kingdom, where is the, the Israel's portion. Go ahead. With Isaac. Did he establish likewise? No, no, no. With Ishmael. With Isaac. Did he establish likewise? You see now, you see here Sirach is summarizing the issues here. 
He's summarizing everything that we just went over. We see in the summary right here. And with, he, he didn't say with Ishmael did he establish likewise. He said with Isaac did he establish likewise. Meaning Noah, Abraham, Isaac. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 22. With Isaac did he establish likewise. Come on. For Abraham, his father, said, mm. The blessing of all men. The blessing of what now? The blessing of all men. The blessing of all what? The blessing of all men. From Isaac. Who are all these men? He says, The blessings of all men. Go ahead. And the covenant. And the what? And the covenant. Read verse 22 one more again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 22. Come on. With Isaac did he establish likewise. Uh -huh. For Abraham his father said. You see that? Go ahead. The blessing of all men. The blessing of all men. And the covenant. So which all men came out of Isaac? Our forefather. He's going to let you know in the next chapter who also he had a covenant with. Read. And made it, and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. You see that? So when he says, and made that blessing rest upon the head of Jacob. You understand? The blessing, he says, he made the blessing to rest upon the head of Jacob. The head of Jacob is Judah. <coughs> Christ. Go ahead. And he made it rest upon the head of Jacob. Go ahead. He acknowledged him. In his place. Because this also goes into how Esau and Jacob was born. Remember it says what? Esau, Jacob will hold the head, will, what? will hold the heel of Esau. You understand that? Nah. Read. He acknowledged him in his blessing. Mm. And gave him an inheritance. Read. And divided his portion mm -hmm. among the twelve tribes. You see, that's the nations. That's the all men. The all men is being explained in verse 23. Read that verse 23 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44, verse 23. Watch this. And made it rest upon the head of Jacob. Uh -huh. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him an heritage and divided his portion. Among the twelve tribes did he pass it. Among the what? Among the twelve tribes did he pass it. Among the twelve tribes did he pass them. That's the blessing of all men. If you want to know who's the all men, is the twelve tribes. That's the all men. Understand that, man. 45 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 45, verse 1. Go ahead. And he brought out of him a merciful man. He says, and he brought out of him. Who's the him? Jacob. He brought out of Jacob a merciful man. Read. Which found favor in the sight of all flesh. Mm. Even Moses. Moses, our forefather. Come on. Beloved of God mm. and man. Whose memorial is blessed. All praises. Come on. He made him like to the glorious saints. Mm. And magnified him so that his enemies stood in fear of him. That's Pharaoh. When he says enemies, talk about Pharaoh here. Go ahead. By his ways, he caused the wonders to see. Mm. And he made him glorious in the sight of king. Mm. And gave him a commandment for his people. And showed him part of his glory. You can read that in, you can read about that. In Exodus 33. Go ahead. He sanctified him in his faithfulness mm. and meekness and chose him out of all men. The same way Noah, our forefather, was chosen out of all men during those days. Moses also was the same. Read. He made, he made him to hear his voice mm. and brought him into the dark cloud. That's the chariot. Go ahead. And gave him commandments before his face, mm. even the law of life and knowledge. Mm. That he might teach Jacob his covenant. That he might what now? That he might teach Jacob his covenant. That he might teach Jacob, not Ishmael, not Esau, no, Jacob. His what? His covenant. His covenant, plural, old and new. He's letting you know the old and the new covenant belong, pertaineth to the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And Israel, his judgment. That's it. And Israel, his judgment. This what we're reading here, this is, guess what? This Sirah, where is he getting it from? Give me that in Psalms. Psalms 147. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. Come on. He showed his way unto Jacob, mm. 
his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. You see that? That's what we just read. Yes, sir. Read it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. Come on. He showeth his way unto Jacob, mm. his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Come on. He has not dealt so with any nation. Mm. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That, listen, what we read in here, we just read. Go back to Psalm 45. Read verse 5 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 45, verse 5. He made him like. What did you say? The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 45, verse 5. Mm -hmm. He made him to hear his voice. Read. And brought him into the dark cloud. Come on. And gave him commandments before his faith. Watch this. Even the law of life and knowledge. Mm -hmm. That he might teach Jacob his covenant. That he might what now? That he might teach Jacob his covenant. He showed his word unto Jacob. Read. And Israel his judgment. You see that? He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. That's what we read in Yemen. You understand that? Now, give me Isaiah 28 and 9. Isaiah 28 and verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Come on. Who shall he teach knowledge? Mm, that's the question. Who shall he teach knowledge? Who shall God teach his knowledge? Go ahead. And who shall he make to understand doctrine? Mm. Them that are weaned from the milk and thrown from the breast. So, you see, he's answer, asking the question and he's also providing the answers. You understand? It's called a question-answer dialogue. That's what it's called. I'm going to give an example of that. Hold that. Give me Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63 and 1. Pay close attention. Listen good. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 1. Come on. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Mm. With dyed garments from Bozra. Mm. This, this that is glorious in his apparel. Mm. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Mm. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. This is Christ speaking. You understand? This is Christ speaking. He is asking the question and he's providing the answers in the same time. Go ahead. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Why are you dressing red? Go ahead. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine in wine fed. In wine fed. Go ahead, watch this. I have trodden the wine press alone. So he is giving you the answer. Right there. Come on. I have trodden the wine press alone. Mm. And of the people, there was none with me. He's, he's letting you who the white press is. The people of Eram and Bosra. Read. For I will tread them in my anger mm. and trample them in my fury. Go ahead. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment. That's it right there. So what we're reading here is letting you know this, this hasn't happened yet. You understand? You know what this goes into? This goes into thy kingdom come that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's when this will come to pass. You understand that? Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 3. Mm -hmm. I have trodden the one press alone. And of the people, there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger mm. and trample them in my fury. Read. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment. Mm. And I will stain all my raiment. Read. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. Now, this is the Lord of heaven and earth. This is the biblical Messiah, man. You see that white demonic Jesus that you see on TV? He will never say this thing. You understand? These words will never come out of that gay man's mouth. Never. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 4. Read. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. Go ahead. And the year of my redeemed is come. The day is the what? The year of my redeemed is come. Who's the redeemed? There are 12 tribes of it. That's the redeem. So I was just showing an example. So go back to Isaiah 28, verse 9 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Read. Who shall he teach knowledge? Come on. And who shall he make to understand doctrine? He's going to tell you who those people are. Read. Them that are weaned from the milk. The people that are weaned from the milk. And thrown from the press. That's the people that the Lord says he will teach his knowledge and he will teach his doctrine. 
Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Let's get the knowledge. Get in Malachi 2. Malachi 2 and 7. Let's see what this knowledge is. That the Lord says, who's going to be there to teach? You understand? Who can I teach my knowledge? Malachi 2 verse 7. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Read. For the priest lives should keep knowledge. Mm. And they should seek the law of his mouth. They should what? And they should seek the law at his mouth. Come on. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. That's the knowledge. The knowledge, excuse me, is the laws of God. So now go back. Isaiah 28, verse 9. One more again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Come on. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Mm, the knowledge is what? The laws of God. Come on. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Let's get the doctrine. Give me that in Proverbs 4, verse 2. Proverbs 4 and 2. Let's understand what is this doctrine. So the Lord is saying, listen, who can I teach my knowledge and who can I teach my doctrine? Okay, come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 2. Read. For I give you good doctrine. I give you what now? For I give you good doctrine. Mm. For say, keep not my law. That's the doctrine. So the laws of God is the doctrine that God says. The people who I want to teach my knowledge and my doctrine is them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Go back. Isaiah 28. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Read. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Uh -huh. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Come on. Them that are weaned from the milk. Stop. So the people that are weaned from the milk is them that will be given knowledge and given the good doctrine. Let's get that. First Peter, chapter 2 and 1. Let's get to the point. First Peter 2 and 2. We're getting the milk. You understand? Read it. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. Come on. As newborn babes mm. desire the sincere milk of the way. The what now? The sincere milk of the way. The sincere, sincere milk of the word. That he may grow their back. You see, that's the milk. The milk is the word. The milk is the word of God. What is the word of God? The knowledge and the doctrine. You understand? So he says, the people that will receive my knowledge and they will receive my doctrine is them that are weaned from the milk. That's why the command was given. Brothers, restart your, your reading stuff. Restart your reading. Go back from the beginning because the milk is just being overlooked. You understand? Because if you overlook the milk, the Lord is not, you're not going to get the knowledge, neither will you get the doctrine. You will miss it. You understand? So go back, Isaiah 28 verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Come on. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk. The milk is the sincere word. Go ahead. And drawn from the press. And what? And drawn from the press. Give me second Ezra, chapter 8, verse 10. Second Ezra 8 and verse 10. Pay close attention. Second book of Ezra, chapter 8, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But thou hast commanded. Out of the parts of the body. Out of the what? Out of the parts of the body. Come on. That is to say, mm -hmm. out of the breasts. Out of the what? Out of the breasts. Out of the breasts. Plural. Go ahead. Milk to be given. That's it. Milk to be given. Go ahead. Which is the fruit of the breast. That's it. So the milk is the fruit of the breasts. Go ahead. That the thing which is patient may be nourished for a time. So the thing is a so that the thing which is what? That the thing which is fashioned, which is what, which is fashioned, which is fashioned, go ahead, may be nourished for a time, may be nourished for a time, go ahead, till thou disposest it to thy mess. Now stop right there. He says, "Which the thing which thou hast fashioned may be nourished for a time." What is the what time is this? Give me Genesis chapter twelve real quick. No, not 12. Genesis 21. Start with 1. Listen good. The book of Genesis, chapter 21, verse 1. Come on. And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. Mm. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Go ahead. For Sarah conceived. Did she did what? 
Our foremother conceived. Go, praises to the Lord. Go ahead. And bear Abraham a son mm. in his old age. Go ahead. At the set time of which God had spoken to him. Great. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, mm. whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Go ahead. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old. Being what now? Being eight days old. So on the eighth day, he was circumcised. Go ahead. As God had commanded him. Mm. And Abraham was a hundred years old. Was a what now? And Abraham was a hundred years old. He was a hundred years old when Abraham, when Isaac was born. Read. When his son Isaac was born unto him. Come on. And Sarah said, mm. God has made me to laugh. That's what the name Isaac mean. Made to laugh. Go ahead. So that all that here will laugh with me. Mm. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given should have given children suck? Mm. For I have born him a son in his old age. Watch this. And the child grew mm. and was weaned. And was what? And was weaned. He says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Go ahead. And Abraham made a feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Stop. Go back. Go to 2 Maccabees now. 2 Maccabees chapter 7. Second Maccabees 7, read verse 26. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 26. Come on. And when he had exhorted her with many ways. The, the him is Antiochus. The her is our foremother. Right? That had seven sons. Come on. She promised him that she, that she would counsel her son. Go ahead. But she, bowing herself toward him, Loving the cruel tyrant to scorn. Come on, come on. Speak in a country language in this manner. Mm. Oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee three, nine months. That be that what? That bear thee nine months. That carried you nine months in my womb. Come on. In my womb. Uh -huh. And gave thee suck three years. Stop. And did what now? And gave thee suck three years. And gave thee suck three years. Go ahead. And nourished thee. And brought thee up unto this age. Mm -hmm. And endured the trouble, the troubles of education. Stop right there. He says, I what I gave this sack three years. So when he was weaned, that's when the three years was done. You understand? Yeah. So that means at that point, guess what? Now the baby has to do what? Now the baby is at a point where they're gonna get the what? They're gonna start eating some hard stuff now. You understand? So but the three years, watch this, watch this. Give me that in Galatians for me. Real quick. I know I'm going somewhere, but let me just read it. Lord, will you catch it? Go ahead. Galatians, Galatians 4 and 1. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Now I say that the, the heir, as long as he is a child, mm. differs nothing from a seven. Read. Though he be Lord of all. This is talking about Israel here. Go ahead. But is under tutors and governors mm -hmm. until the time appointed of the father. Until the time appointed of the father. When he's weaned. You understand that? When he's weaned. Read again verse 2. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 2. Come on. But is under tutors and governors uh. until the time appointed of the father. Until the what? Until the time appointed of the father. Until the time appointed of the father. Now watch this. Give me Hosea 6 and 1 real quick. Hosea 6 and 1. Come on. The book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 1. Come on. Come, let us return unto the Lord. That's what we're doing right now. We're returning unto the Lord. Come on. For he has torn, mm. and he will heal us. He, he torn us, and he's healing us right now. Read. He has smitten, mm. and he will bind us up. Go ahead. After two days. After what? After two days. Come on. Will he revive us? Will he what now? Will he revive us? After two days, will he revive us? So that's what he's doing right now. He's reviving us. Go ahead. In the third day, mm. he will raise us up. He will what? He will raise us up. When we are weaned. Come on. And we shall live in his sight. That's it. Get it? Now go back. Isaiah 28. No, no, 2nd Exodus. 2nd Exodus chapter 8. Go back there. 2nd Exodus 8. Read verse 10 again. 2nd book of Exodus chapter 8 verse 10. Come on. For thou hast commanded out of the parts of the body 
That is to say, out of the breast, milk to be given, uh -huh. which is the fruit of the breast. Come on. That the thing which is fashioned may be nourished for a time. That the thing which is nourished may be what? That the thing which is fashioned, excuse me, may be nourished for a time. Go ahead. Till thou disposest it to thy midst. You see, till the time appointed of the Father. Read. Thou because, because when it says, on, until thou de disposes it to thy mercy. Isaiah 14 and 1. Real quick. Real quickly. Yes, Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1. Come on. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. You see that? <laughs> Go ahead. And will yet choose Israel. And will yet choose Israel. Until what thou what now? Until, and is until thou dis disposes it to thy mercy. You get it now? Go ahead. And set them in their own land. Mm. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Come on. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. That's it. That's it. Go ahead. And the people shall take them. Mm. And bring them to their place. Ray. And the house of Israel shall possess them. In the land of the Lord. For the se for for servants, servants. And handmaids. Uh -huh. And they shall take them captives. Whose captives they were. Ray. And they shall rule over their oppressors. That they all praises to the most high God for that thing. Second Ezra 8. Read verse 11. Second book of Ezra chapter 8 verse 11. Mm -hmm. That the thing which is fashioned may be nourished for a time. Till thou disposes it to thy base. Read. Thou brought it. Thou brought it up with thy righteousness. Mm -hmm. And naturest it in thy law. Go ahead. And reformest it with thy judgment. You see that? And reformeth it with thy judgment. To reform means to change. You see how the Lord changes our spirit? Through judgment. You understand? That? That's how he opens our ears because they are what? They are blocked. We don't hear nothing. We don't see nothing. So the Lord uses judgment to open our eyes that we may change our ways. Understand that? Okay, give me Matthew 12. Drawn from the breasts. We know Matthew 13 verse 51. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 51. Come on. Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. Have ye understood all these things? Mm. They say unto him, Yea, Lord. Watch this. Then said he unto them, Come on. Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. Every scribe that which is instructed out of the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Is like unto a man that is a householder, mm. which bringeth forth out of his treasure. Which bringeth forth out of his what? Which bringeth forth out of his treasure. Mm -hmm. Out of his mind. Go ahead. Things new and old. You see that? That's the breasts. Plural. The things that are new and old is the Old Testament and the New Testament. You're going to read both. That's what he's saying. You're going to be instructed out of both the old and the new. That's what he's saying right there. I'm going to give an example. The good scribe. This is what the good scribe does. Give me Acts 26 verse 22. The book of Acts chapter 26 verse 22. Come on. Having therefore obtained help of God, mm. I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great. Small nation and great nations, go ahead. Saying none other thing mm. than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. You see what, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says what? He was a good scribe. You understand? Is the things which the prophets did speak and Moses. Because the Apostle Paul was a good scribe. is as I taught none other thing but out of the law and the prophets. Read. That Christ should, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead. Mm. And, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. The people is Judah and the Gentile is Northern Kingdom. That's what he's talking about. Judah and Israel. Jews and Gentiles. That's what he's talking about here. Okay, give me Acts 28 verse 23. Throughout the scriptures you see, because the reason why I'm using the Apostle Paul is because Christians, they are confused by the letters of the Apostle Paul. That's why I'm leaning on him. You understand? Go ahead. The book of Acts chapter 28 verse 23. Come on. And when they had appointed him a day, mm. they came many to him into his lodging. Because the Apostle Paul was under house arrest in Rome. That's why the next chapter, the book of Romans, where he was writing to the Israelites scattered in Rome. 
Read to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. It, listen, it says every scribe which is appointed unto the kingdom of God. So if you are teaching the kingdom of God to the 12 tribes of Israel, there is no way you can do it without using the Old Testament. That's what he's letting you know. The law and the prophet. You have, must use the law and the prophets. Read it again, man. Verse 23. The book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 23. Come on. And when they had appointed him a day, mm. they came many to him and into his lodging. Read. To him he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, mm. persuading them concerning Jesus. Stop. He persuaded the people concerning Christ. Not only that, you cannot teach and convince the people about this, the Messiah, but you are not using the Old Testament. Read. Both out of the law of Moses. Both out of the law of Moses. And out of the prophets. And out of the prophets. You cannot convince and persuade the people to repent, but you are not using the, the law and the prophets. Read. From morning till evening. From what now? From morning till evening. Watch this, go ahead. And some believe mm. the things which were spoken. And some believe the things which the apostle Paul spake. Go ahead. And some believe not. Because some and some did not believe. That's the Christian church. Many of our people that are in the Christian church, some believe when we teach them on the street, but the majority they don't believe it. Next verse. Go ahead. And when they agreed not among themselves. And they will argue among themselves about that too. How many times have you seen when people come to hear the word of God on the street, they end up arguing among themselves? How many times have you seen that, man? Read. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one way. Mm. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our father. Because guess what? Is that these people don't, don't hear nothing that this Bible is saying. You understand? You can read about that in Isaiah 6. Okay? Now drop that. Give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. I'm still dealing with the apostle. I'm giving an example of what a good scribe does. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. So I'm giving an example of that. Read. That's book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Come on. Be ye followers of me. This is the apostle Paul speaking. What did he say? Be ye followers of me. Be ye followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. Even as I also am of Christ. So when he was using the old, the law, and the prophets, who was he following? The Messiah. You understand? Because you hear a lot of our people in the Christian church, they say, I'm washing the blood of Jesus, but they reject his color. They reject who he came for. They reject who he died for. And they rejected the message that he taught that the kingdom is only for the 12 tribes. They reject all that, but they still say they are washed in the blood of Jesus. No, no. They are not washed in the blood of Jesus. They are bathing in the blood of Satan. You understand that? They are sucking blood from his nipples. They be sitting on his lap. They're being rocked by Satan every Sunday, man. Because we're sucking milk out of the breast, but they are sucking blood out of the nipples of Satan. You see, that's the difference between us and them. Because there is an us and them. You understand that? There is an us and there is a them. They that are with us, we good. They that are against us, guess what? They are not delivering the people. They hate what this Bible is saying as it is written. Understand that? Okay? Read verse 2 now. Go ahead. That's book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 2. Come on. Now I praise you, brethren, mm. that, you that you remember me in all things. Go ahead. And keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. you that that you, you do what now? And keep the ordinances. That you keep the what? And keep the ordinances. And keep the ordinances, come on. As I delivered them to you. As I delivered them to you. So it says, keep the ordinance, meaning as it is written. Don't make up, don't make up stuff. The same way in the kids, they be making things up. They say, no, the apostle Paul was not following the other prophets. He did his own thing. That's what you hear in the Christian church. The scholars, they be saying stuff like that, man. Give me that Acts 17. We're going to read this again, but I want to read it for something else. Come on. Acts 17 and 1. The book of Acts chapter 17, verse 1. Listen good. And when they had passed through 
Amphipolis. Amphipolis, go ahead. Amphipolis mm -hmm. and Apollonia. Right. They came to Thessalonica. You know Thessalonica, they, there's a lot of unbelievers over there. That's Midrand for you. Mid, there's no believers in Midrand, man. Midrand, man, that's a dead town. That's a dead city, man. That's why the most high move of spirit is to go to Macedon. And you know how exciting Macedon was? Macedon was exciting, man. You understand? Go ahead. Where was the synagogue of the Jews? Mm -hmm. That means the people in Thessalonica, those are Jews, those are Israelites, scattered over there. Come on. And Paul, as his manner was, mm. went in unto them. When he says went in unto them, meaning he taught them. Read. And three Sabbath days, mm. reasoned with them out of the scriptures. You see what a good scribe does? A good scribe reasons out of the scriptures. If you're talking out of your emotions, you're not a good scribe, the Lord is saying. Go ahead. Come on, verse 3. Opening and alleging mm. that Christ might needs have suffered. Go ahead. And risen again from the dead. Watch this. And that this Jesus, mm. whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Because you know why the Apostle Paul wrote it this way? How many times have you heard on this deed? So is Christ Jesus? Is Jesus Christ? Is Jesus and Christ the same? The Apostle Paul gave the answer right here. Because he knew the mind of the Negro man. They're just going to come and argue with the demonic stuff. Things that will not profit the brethren to the gospel in any way. They will come and say, is Christ and Jesus and the Messiah the same thing? Those are foolish questions, man. It says foolish questions avoid. You understand? Because they gender strife. Okay? Now give me Luke 4. Verse 15. Luke 4, 15. Yeah, the topic is still remember the Sabbath day. Don't get it twisted. Luke 4, 15. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 15. Come on. And he taught in their synagogue. He did what? And he taught in their synagogue. This is Christ now. Christ taught in the start of verse 14. So we get it. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 14. Mm. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Mm. In the what now? In the power of the Spirit into Galilee. So when we return, you understand? Listen, man. When we return, we go back to a corner that we used to teach. Or another place we used to teach. Guess what? We, this is how we do it. Go ahead. And what? And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. You see that thing right there? Mm. Go ahead. And there went out the fame of him mm. through all the region round about. Come on. And he taught in their synagogue. Ray. Being glorified of all. Being glorified of all. Come on. And he came to Nazareth mm. where he had been brought up. The way he grew up. That's what it means when he had been brought up. Read. That's why it says Jesus of Nazareth. Go ahead. And as his custom was. As his what? As his custom was. When he says custom, meaning this was what? A habit. As his custom was, go ahead. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. On the what? On the Sabbath day. On the what? On the Sabbath day. You see, listen. Remember the Apostle Paul says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. What happened in the book of Acts 17? Is as three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. On the Sabbath, he was going back and forth. When they say something, he says, give me that. Give me that. Give me. That's how he reasoned with them out of the scriptures, man. Go ahead. And he came to Nazareth, mm. where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, Ray. he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And he did what now? And stood up for to read. What did he read? Next verse. Watch this. And there was delivered unto him mm. the book of the prophet Isaiah. Stop. So, you see, he was a good scribe. Because he's reading out of the what book? And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. You see, he was reading the book of Isaiah. The prophets. Read. And when he, when he had opened the book, mm. he found the place where, where it was written. Read. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Isaiah, the 61st chapter. You can read about that on your own. Come on. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The poor is the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not talking about homeless Muslims. Read. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, mm. to preach deliverance to the captive. Because we are the slaves. You understand? Read. And recovering of sight to the blind. Because we blind. We don't know who we are. We don't see who we are. 
because we have confusion of faces. Read to sighted liberty, mm. them that are bruised. Who's bruising us? The devil. Who's bruising us, man? The devil is bruising us. I'm gonna show you that. Give me that in. Uh, I think it's in the book of Romans, man. Is it Romans? It's me. Yeah, Romans 16 verse 20. Watch this. Start at verse 8. No, no, no. Start at verse 19. Listen, listen, listen good. Let me highlight it. The book of Romans. Chapter 16, verse 19. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. Read. I am glad therefore on your behalf. Mm. But yet I will have you wise unto that which is good. Go ahead. And simple concerning evil. Watch this. And the God of peace mm. shall bruise Satan. Shall what? Shall bruise Satan. You see that the God of peace will bruise Satan. Go ahead. Under your feet shortly. Mm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. You see that thing? Because who's bruising us, man? Satan is bruising us. That's why the Lord says, I'm going to bruise him. Because he's bruising you. You understand that, right? Satan is bruising us. So the Lord says, when I return, I'm going to squash him like a bug. When I return. And I will not meet, me, meet him as a man. I'm going to meet him as something else. You understand that? Mm. Go back. Look now. Yes, sir. Read. Look for the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me mm. because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Go ahead. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, mm. and recovering of sight to the blind. Come on. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Them that are what? Them that are bruised. Them that are bruised. Let's get some more on there. Get that in Isaiah 1. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6. Mm. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in, soundness in it. That's talking about the 12th child because the whole head is sick. Come on. But wounds and bruises. But wounds and what? But wounds and bruises. Because Satan is bruising us. Go ahead. And putrefying souls. Mm. They have not been clothed. Come on. Neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. That's exactly right. You understand that? So the same way Satan was in the garden. You understand? Who's in the who's in the garden right now? Satan. Amalek. You see, this is a repeat of Genesis, the third chapter. Satan was in the garden. Today, Satan's back in the garden. Think about it. You understand? Now, um, give me. First Peter 2, 21. First Peter 2, verse 21. Remember the Apostle Paul says, Be ye followers of me. Because what the Apostle Paul did, he, he taught on the Sabbath. What did Christ do? He taught on the Sabbath day. That means he observed the law of the Sabbath. And we're going to get into details of that. But I'm starting in the New Testament and going backwards. You understand that? Uh-huh. Come on, and I'm using the, I'm, I'm reading about the Apostle Paul, who followed Christ, who kept the commandments, including the Sabbath. Read that, First Peter. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Come on. For even ye unto where ye call, mm. because Christ also suffered for us. Go ahead. Leaving us an example. He did what? Leaving us an example. Come on. That he should follow his steps. So Christ left us an example, a practical example of how we follow him. Read who did no sin, mm. neither was God found in his mouth. He wasn't bitter. Go ahead. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Come on. When he suffered, he threatened not. Read. But committed himself to him that judges righteously. But he committed himself to him that judges righteously. He put his trust in the Lord. That's what he did. Now give me the book of Luke 24. Luke 24, 25. An example. Remember we read the example when it says um, it was given, it was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Yes, you understand? Now read this. Luke 24, 25. The book of Luke chapter 24 verse 25. Come on. Then he said unto them, mm. O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. You see, because he was saying they are stupid. 
You understand? He said they were simpletons because they don't believe the things that the prophets have spoken. The prophets of old. Read. Was not Christ to have suffered these things uh -huh. and to enter into his glory. We went over that in great detail. And to enter into his glory. Read. And beginning at Moses. Stop. You see? You see what he did? He began at Moses. That was as them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Read that part again. And beginning at Moses. He began at Moses. Because when Christ walked the earth, there was no New Testament, man. There was no New Testament when Christ walked the earth. So where was he reading out of? The law and the prophets. Read. And beginning at Moses. Mm -hmm. And all the prophets. And what? And all the prophets. We just got an example in Luke 4. He read the book of Isaiah. So he began at Moses. So when he began at Moses, where did he go? Genesis. He went to the beginning, man. Read. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. In all the what? In all the scriptures. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Come on. The things concerning himself. So what was he telling them? He says, when I, when you, when I begin at Moses and all the prophets, you're reading everything concerning me. You understand? You want to know anything about me, you read the law and the prophets. You'll know about me. Because he says, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So when he did that, read verse 27 again. The book of Luke chapter 24 verse 27. Mm -hmm. And beginning at Moses. Read. And all the prophets. Come on. He expanded unto, unto them in all the scriptures. The things concerning himself. Watch this. Read verse 44 and 45. Verse 44. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them. Mm -hmm. These are the ways which I spake unto you. While I was yet with you. Come on. That all things must be fulfilled. Are all things must be fulfilled. Come on. Which were written in the law of Moses. Beginning at Moses. Come on. And in the prophets. Uh-huh. And in the Psalms. Read. Concerning me. Because it concerns him. You want to learn about the Messiah? That's why the Apostle Paul says what? He, he went in unto them three Sabbath days. He was con persuading them regarding the kingdom and Christ. You understand? He says, I taught none other things but out of the law of Moses and of the prophets. Read. So when they say, when you hear the pastor say, the, new, the Old Testament is done away with, what are they saying? They are saying Christ is done away with. That's what they are saying. They are, they are saying Christ is done away with. That's why when you go to the churches, you find why Jesus has been there. That's how they show you that the biblical Messiah is done away with because we have a new Jesus, which is white. That's what they're saying. Read. Verse 45. Mm -hmm. Then opened he their understanding. Read. That they might understand the scripture. Out of the law, out of Moses, and out of all the prophets. You are not going to, your understanding will not open if you are not being taught out of the law of Moses and out of all the prophets. You will not get the understanding, don't care what you do. You can form at the mouth. You can be rallying. You can be tumbling on the floor. You are not going to, your understanding will not be open until you are taught out of the law of Moses and all the prophets. Then what's going to happen? Verse 45. One more again. The book of Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Mm -hmm. Then open ye their understanding. He opened their understanding. That they might understand the scriptures. You understand that? So that's why the, the, the apostles, they understood the scriptures. Why? Because they were taught out of the law of Moses and of all the prophets. So when you wanna, don't want to read the law, because when you read the when Christ was speaking, which is written in red and all that, guess what? If you don't read the Old Testament, you are going to be lost. You are not going to know what Christ is talking about at all. You understand that? You read the letters of Paul, which Christians love to read, but they don't see, they don't follow what the apostle, the apostle Paul says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Because why? He, how did he follow Christ? From where? Beginning at Moses. That's how he followed the Messiah. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets. So, go back to verse 27 again. Luke chapter 24, verse 
verse 27 mm -hmm. and beginning at Moses and beginning at Moses and all the prophets and all the prophets he expanded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself so where did he begin where did he begin and beginning at Moses and what now and beginning at Moses so let's do let's do the same let's begin at Moses give me Genesis 2 give me Genesis 1 verse 31 let's begin at Moses you understand if we are to get a proper understanding of what's being said here. Let's also begin at Moses. Genesis 1 verse 31. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Come on. And God saw everything that he had made. Mm. And behold, it was very good. It was what? It was very good. Come on. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Chapter 2 and 1. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, mm. and all the host of them. Read. And on the seventh day. On the what? And on the seventh day. On the seventh day. Come on. God ended his wife, mm. which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. He did what? And he rested on the seventh day. Because the seventh day is the day of rest. Come on. From all his wife, mm. which he had made. Come on. And God blessed the seventh day mm. and sanctified it. Read. Because that. In it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So what we reading here, what are we reading about here? We are reading about the Sabbath day. So we also beginning at Moses. We are doing the same thing that the Apostle Paul commanded us, be ye followers of me. You understand? So we are doing the same thing, beginning at Moses. You understand? Give me that in uh, Sirach 33 verse 7. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 7. Come on. Why does one day excel another? Why is one day more excellent than other days? Read. When as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun. Because it's of the same sun. The same cycle of the sun. Go ahead. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinct. So the knowledge of the Lord is what's separating other days from other days. Some days are more excellent than others. Read. And he altered seasons and feasts. Uh -huh. By the knowledge of the Lord. Come on. Some of them have he made high days. Some of these days he made them high days. That's why they are more excellent than other days. Go ahead. And hallowed them. And he made them holy. Come on. And some of them have he made ordinary days. So there are other days that are ordinary days. Let's read about that. Give me Genesis 1 verse 5. I'm going to show you ordinary days. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 5. Come on. And God called the light day, mm. and the darkness he called night. Read. And the evening and the morning were the first day. That's the first day. Verse 8. Verse 8. Mm. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Okay, read verse 13. Verse 13. Read. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Verse 19. Verse 19. Mm. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Verse 23. Verse 23. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Verse 31. Verse 31. Uh -huh. And God saw everything that he had made. Read. And behold, it was very good. Come on. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So these are ordinary days. What we just read, these are ordinary days. Now Genesis 2 verse 1 again. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, mm. and all the hosts of them. Come on. And on the seventh day. On the what? And on the seventh day. Come on. God ended his work, which he had made. Read. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Mm. And God blessed the seventh day. He did what? And God blessed the seventh day. That's why it says, by the, by the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished. Because some days are more excellent than others. Some are high days and they were sanctified and hallowed. Some are just ordinary days. This is what we're reading right now. This is not an ordinary day. Okay, come on, verse 3 again. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 3. Read. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Let's get into that. Let's get into that. Exodus 20 verse 8. Let's get into this day. That is not an ordinary day. You see, the seventh day is not an ordinary day. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Read again. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's today's topic. Read again. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's the fourth commandment. 
the fourth commandment. Remember the what? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Because you forgot it. You forgot when the Sabbath day is. That's why many of our people, they go to church on Sunday because they think that's the day that the Lord has ordained. It is not. The seventh day is the day that the Lord has ordained. And that's it. There's no two ways about it. Don't care how you feel in your heart. Because you, I, we, we've had many times on the streets how people will be saying, no, but you know, it can be any day. No. It cannot be any day. That's why we read, he says what? Some days have he made ordinary days and some days have he made high days and hallowed them. Because by the knowledge of God, they were distinguished. You understand? Read verse 8 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Mm. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So the Lord says, listen, I know you for God. That's why I'm saying remember it. Give me that in John 14, 26. We read it earlier. Let's read it again. John 14, 26. Because our people in the Christian church, they'll be telling you, no, I got the Holy Ghost. How come the Holy Ghost didn't bring to you a remembrance that you must keep the Sabbath day holy? Hmm? The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. Right. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, right. whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things mm. and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance. You understand? For instance, who you are. Who we are. We the 12 tribes of Israel. Keep the Sabbath day holy. You understand? Keep all the commandments will rule the earth. So in the Christian church, it's clear and obvious and evident that they don't have the Holy Ghost upon them. They've got an unholy demon upon them. You understand? That's why their minds are not right. Their minds are not right, man. Because when the devil is on you, your mind ain't right. Give me that in Mark 5. I'm going to give an example of that. Mark 5 and 1. Yes, they go back, chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And they came over unto the other side of the sea. Right. Into the country of the Gadarenes. The Gadarenes. Get that in page 184. In the zone event. Page 184. Read that. Page 184. Read the definition of Gadarenes. Let's see where, the, where this is. You see, our people, the Christianity has taught our people all manner of excuses so they don't have to keep the commandments of the Mosai. You got the sound of it? Yeah, read it. Page 184. Look for the definition of gatherings. Got it? Yes, sir. Read it. Reading from the sound of it, Bible dictionary. Uh huh. Page 184. Gadara. Mm. Gadarin. Go ahead. One of the cities of the Decapolis. Decap one of the cities of Decapolis, come on. Near the S E L. No, no, the southeast. Near the southeast end of the Sea of Galilee. So this is southeast of Galilee. That's where the Gadari, Gadar, the city of the Gadarins. Gadara. They say Gadara. Yes, sir. Yeah, Gadara is southeast of Galilee. This is Jerusalem. Okay. Is that it on that? No, sir. Okay, come on. Near which the demonic, the demonicans, the demoniacs, the demoniacs. You see, when you have the devil on you, they call you a demoniac. The same you've got kleptomaniacs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You got the devil on you, you're a demoniac. Read it again. That's a new word we're gonna use now going forward. Come on. Near which the demoniacs lived, whom Jesus healed. Uh huh. Now go back to Mark five and one. Mark five and one. Pay close attention. I'm going to give an example because our people in the Christian church, including these demonic wicked pastors, they say they got the Holy Ghost. If they had the Holy Ghost on them, guess what? They will remember the Sabbath day and they will keep it holy. Now read what you got. The book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 1. Come on. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, mm -hmm. into the country of the Gadarene. Right. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. A man with an un what now? A man with an unclean spirit. A demoniac. You understand? A demoniac met Christ. You see that? Because he was living at the tombs. At the cemetery. That's where he lived. He was in the congregation of the dead. So our people that don't hear this too, they reject it. 
They, they are demoniacs. You understand that? They are demoniacs. They've got unclean spirits on them. What is that unclean spirit? Christianity, as an example. Politics, unclean spirits. You understand? Read again verse 2. The book of Mark chapter 5 verse 2. Come on. And when he was come out of the ship, mm. immediately they met him out of the tombs. A man with an unclean spirit. A man with a what? A man with an unclean spirit. Ray. Who? Who had his dwelling among the tombs? Uh-huh. And no man could find him. No, not with chains. Ray. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. Mm. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Because remember, this man right here, he represents our people, man. In the congregation of the dead, in the lands of our captivity. Read. And always, night and day, he was in the mountain and in the tomb. The congregation of the dead, go ahead. Crying mm. and cutting himself. And with, doing what? And cutting himself with stones. Mm. But when he saw Jesus above all, he ran and worshipped him. Watch this. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God, mm. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. He says, don't torment me. Now these are unclean spirits speaking to the Lord now. Watch this, go ahead. For he said unto him. Meaning what? Listen, how you are judging us. You know, don't judge us. Why are you judging us? Everyone, that's what they say when we teach. Uh -huh. Go ahead. For he said unto him, mm. come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Ray. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, say, my name is Legion, mm. for we are men. For we are what? For we are men. There's many demoniacs on this man. Many, many devils, man, upon him. Come on. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now stop. I want you to jump down to verse, verse 15. Watch this. Because remember, he had an unclean spirit upon him, right? Verse 15. The book of Mark chapter 5 verse 15 mm. and they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and what now and see him that was possessed with the devil right and had, and had the legion sitting and clothed he was sitting and clothed come on and and, and in his right mind wait and in what now and in his right mind and in his right mind so when you have an unclean spirit you have the devil on you 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 are not in your right mind your mind ain't right. So when we say that, you're like, mm. you understand? You get mad, you get offended. Your mind ain't right. Something wrong with you, man. Because you have, an un you have an unclean spirit on you and you are holding it, you're protecting it like you're going to get a prize. You're going to get a missile. Keep holding on to that demon. You understand? Right? The book of Mark chapter 5 verse 15. Mm -hmm. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. Right. And had the legion sitting and clothed. And in his right mind. And they were afraid. You see that they were afraid like what? Is he also among the prophets? You understand? They're going to be asking those questions. Next verse. Come on. And, and they that saw it told them how it befell to him. That was possessed with the devil. That was what? That was possessed with the devil. He was possessed with the devil. Come on. And also concerning the swine. Now, now, you see this part right here. That's what I'm going to show you. You see, Christians are just simple as hell. Because when, give me Leviticus 11. Because if they had the Holy Ghost upon them, they would know that swine is what is unclean. Remember, when Moses gave us the law, we were in the wilderness. You understand that? We were in the wilderness, man. The Gaza Strip. We were not in the... We were not we, we, where the Gadarenes were. We were not in Gadar. We were in the wilderness. Now read that. Leviticus 11. Yes, sir. Uh, verse 1. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 1. Con we're going to read this concerning the what? The swine. Yes, now read it. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, mm. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Go ahead. Whatsoever parts the hoof mm. and is cloven footed 
and cheweth the cud. Go ahead. Among the beef that shall he eat. That shall he eat. Watch this. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. these shall he not eat of them that chew the cud. Or of them that divide the hoop as the kernel. Because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoop. He is unclean unto you. Now jump down to verse 7. Let's get to the point. Now, because the reason why we love to read this one is because our people love to go to Wimpy. Hmm? Yes, they go to Wimpy. They go to McDonald's, is it? Yes, McDonald's, do they sell that? Do they sell bacon at McDonald's? Uh-huh, go ahead. And the swine. The pig. You understand? The pig, the swine. Read. And the swine, mm. though he divided the hoop, mm. though he divided the hoop, and be cloven foot. Watch this. Yet he cheweth not the card. He doesn't chew the card like the goat does. Go ahead. He is unclean to you. He is what now? He is unclean to you. What did that man have? An unclean spirit. That man had an unclean spirit on him. Read on. Of their flesh shall he not eat. Uh huh. And their carcass shall he not touch. Read. They are unclean to you. You see that thing? Because the pig having an unclean spirit is good in the sight of the Lord because that's what it was made for. You understand that, right? Uh huh. Go, go back now. Mark 5. Now, read verse 12. The book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 12. Start of verse 11. Watch this. Verse 11. Start of verse 10. The book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 10. Listen good. And he besought him much that he would not send them away mm. out of the country. Uh huh. Go ahead. Meaning, now, meaning what? The legion of demons. Read the devils on him. Come on. Now there was then nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feed. Stop. He says, as next to the mountain, there was a great herd of swine, of pigs. They were eating. Go ahead. And all the devils besought him, mm. saying, mm. Send us into the swine, mm. that we may enter into them. Stop. What, why did the Lord say, don't eat the, the pig? Go back to Leviticus 11, mm. verse 7 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 7. Watch this. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. That's what's in question here. The swine. Come on. Though he divide the hoop. Though he divide the hoop. And be cloven footed. Mm -hmm. Yet he cheweth not the car. Go ahead. He is unclean to you. He is what now? He is unclean to you. Go back now to Mark. Mm -hmm. Read the book of Mark chapter 5 verse 11. Come on. Now there was now there was then nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Meaning they begged him. What did they say? Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Stop. Now, what I want to show you is because the swine is unclean to us. You understand? But these devils wanted to enter into the herd of swine. Why? Because it's the same spirit. It's unclean. You understand? Yeah. Give me that in First Timothy because they use this scripture a lot when you rebuke them about eating pork. First Timothy 4 and 1. First book of Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Watch this. Now the spirit speaketh expressly. The word of God speaketh expressly. Go ahead. That in the latter time, mm. some shall depart from the faith. You know, I'm taking a break. Yeah, that's what we're reading. Listen, man, the Apostle Paul, for the space of three years, I didn't keep quiet about this thing. Read. Giving ye to seducing spirit. Listen good. And doctrines of devils. And what now? And doctrines of devils. The same devils that was in the breath. You see the people that live out of here? What do they have? They've got devils on them, man. They are demoniacs, yes? Those are demoniacs. You understand? Go ahead. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Uh -huh. Having their conscience seared with a hot eye. Now jump down to verse 4. Listen good. Verse 4. Uh -huh. For every creature of God is good. Because this is where they go. Remember, they've got devils on them. So now the scripture says, every what now? For every creature of God is good. For whatever it was made for. You understand that? For its purpose. The pig is good for what it was made for by the Mosai. The scorpion is good for what it was made for by the Mosai God. Read. And nothing to be refused. Uh -huh. If it be received with thanksgiving. Stop. So when you read this, the Christians when they read this, they say, you see, 
So you can eat pork because why? It was what? If, if it be received with thanksgiving. Keep reading. For it is sanctified by the word of God and pray. Just pray over it. That's what they say, man. They say, no, just pray over it. This is crazy because why? Doctrine of devil. Doctrines of devils, man. They've got devils on them. Their mind ain't right. That's the issue. Now go back. Mark 5. Verse 12. Yeah, go Mark chapter 5, verse 12. Come on. And all the devils besought him, saying, mm. Send us into the swine, right. that we may enter into them. Because they are unclean. So guess what? Hold this. Give me Sirach 13. Let's get some more on this. Yeah? Sirach 13, verse 15. Listen good. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 13, verse 15. Come on. Every beast loveth its life. Stop. We just read it, man. Every beast loveth his life. That's why the devil says, no, we want to go into the swine. You telling me or where people were feeding swine, there was no other places where people were herding cattle and sheep and goat. Because that's what we survived by. Man. Livestock and farming. Go ahead. Every beast loveth his life. Go ahead. And every man loveth his name. Next verse. All flesh consulted according to kind. That's what we just read in the book of Mark. Come on. And a man will cleave to his life. That's it on there. Go back. Mark 5. The book of Mark chapter 5 verse 12. Come on. And all the devils besought him say, mm. send us unto the, into the swine that we may enter into them. Because every beast loveth his like. Read. And for it, Jesus gave them leave. They, he said because he didn't refuse because he understood this. You understand? It was obvious. Read. And the unclean spirit went out mm. and entered into the swine. Go ahead. And the head ran violently down to steep, to steep place. Down a sea. steep, down a steep. And the head ran violently down a steep place into the sea. Into the sea. Go ahead. There were about 2,000. Stop. There were what now? They were about 2,000. I want you to stop right here. Give me Nehemiah 8 and 8. You see, Christianity don't keep teach our people to have sense. Christianity is a senseless demonic doctrine of demoniacs. Now, read that. Nehemiah 8 verse 8. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. Come on. So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly. In the what now? So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly. Isn't that what we, we've been doing since we began? Beginning at Moses. Go ahead. And gave the sense. And did what now? And gave the sense. That's what we're doing right now. We're giving the sense. Come on. And cause them to understand the reason. We're causing you to understand the Remember says, he be beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Then verse 45 in Luke says what? Then open he their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. Now go back. Mark chapter 5. Verse 13. One more again. The book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 18. Come on. And for it, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out mm. and entered into the swine. Right. And the head ran violently down a steep place into the sea. Come on. There were about 2,000. About what? There were about 2,000. Now, keep this in mind. Two, about, two, about. So, it's an estimate. About 2,000 pigs. It, was this the whole earth? Where was this? That's why I read verse 1 in the, in the first place. Gadara. Southeast of Galilee. It was in the whole earth. So when we read Leviticus 11, it says, don't eat swine, is unclean. They said, no. But you know, Jesus, you understand? The unclean spirit went into those pigs. Those pigs are the ones that are unclean. The rest is fine. You ever heard this? You haven't heard this on the street? So reading is fundamental, but comprehension is key. 2,000 pigs in one place. Remember, Moses is teaching us we are in the wilderness. What we're reading here, Christ is in Gadar, southeast of Galilee. And it's how many pigs? About 2,000. You cannot make this stuff up. You get it? Yes, sir. Come on, keep reading. And the head ran violently down a steep place into the sea. Mm -hmm. There were about 2,000. 
and were choked in the sea. Now, you see this? This what we read in here is our, uh, our brothers and sisters in the Christian church, they will take you right here. When you rebuke them about don't eat pork. You understand that? When you rebuke, they're going to take you here. And when they see that they don't win here, guess where they're going to go? First Timothy. The letters of Paul. They say, but he says every creature is God of good. Just hit them with Sarah 13 and shut them up. You understand? Uh -huh. Keep going. Verse 14. Mm. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see and they went out to see what, what it was that was done. Go ahead. Verse 15. And they came and they came to Jesus and he that was possessed with the devil. That was what? That was possessed with the devil. Come on. And the legion sitting and clothed. Mm. And, and in his right mind. And in his right mind. And in his right mind. So guess what? When your, your mind is not right. When you get rebuked, you're going to get mad. Because your mind ain't right. What you have on you got the devil on you. You're a demoniac. Read. And they were afraid. Mm. And they that saw it told, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. With the what? With the devil. With the what? With the devil. With the devil. Come on. And also concerning the swine. Why is he mentioning this? With the one that possessed with devils and also the, the what? Concerning the swine. Why is he have to mention concerning the swine? Because there are people understood they went into the because these things are clean, we don't eat this. And also concerning the swine, because why? The spirits were unclean, they went into an unclean animal. And things were good. You understand that, right? Yes, so when the people tell you, no, I'm not gonna eat that, be I'm I'm gonna eat it because why? Because uh, the ones that were unclean is the one that went into the water. How simple is just read verse 1 and then you say, but this was in southeast of Galilee. So what happened to the rest of the pigs upon the earth? Because this account only happened in Galilee. You see how this works? Mm -hmm. Now, um, go back. Go back to John 14. Because you can read the same account in Matthew 8. Matthew 8 verse 28 down. You can read about the same account. You understand? Okay, go back. John chapter 14, verse 26. Because well, actually, you know what? Ne? Um, give me X8. Yeah. X chapter 8. Read X8. Uh, this talk about Simon. Not Simon Peter, but Simon, when he saw the apostles, were laying on hands. He wanted to buy it. He said, listen, I want to buy this thing that you're doing, man. Isn't what they're doing in the Christian church? That's what they're doing. And you've got brothers and sisters that come up in here. They give arms as though they can buy this. Yes. Some of them, they left because they were mad as hell. They say, you know, I'm giving all this money, but they keep correcting me. Yeah, we're going to correct you. What do you think is going to happen, man? Because in the Christian church, you know, the people, they buy the pastor so the pastor don't read the Bible. And the pastor knows they are wrong, but he's not going to say nothing because they give him the most money. They're the one, they, they swipe. They swipe the money. How many times have you, if you can, yes, you can write a check of a hundred billion right now. If you do some demon, I'm going to correct you with that, say the Lord. You're going to get mad and say, I want my money back. <laughs> because in the Christian church, that's what they do. Because it shows that you are trying to buy us. So we don't correct you. You see the thing? Uh -huh. What verse I say? God? Oh, Acts 8. Acts chapter 8. I read verse 18. Acts chapter 8 verse 18. Remember, this is Simon of Samaria. And he bewitched the people of Samaria. Read Acts 8, 8 verse 9. The book of Acts chapter 8 verse 9. Come on. And there was a certain man called Simon, mm. which before time in the same city used sorcery. Witchcraft. And bewitched the people of Samaria, mm. giving out that himself was 
some great one. You are some great one. Go ahead. To whom they all gave heed. They listened. Come on. From the least to the greatest, mm. they, this man is the great power of God. Go ahead. And to him they had regard, mm. because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. That's this right here. This is Kibu TV Jakes. Who Kreflo Dollar? Who Joel Olstein? Who Pastor Mukuba? Who Bushiri? This is them. This right here, this is them. People eating grass, drinking petrol, wearing women's underwear on their head. In the church. Mboro is doing that, ne? Yes. So what did he do to the people? He bewitched them with sorcery. You understand? So jump down to verse 18. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And when Simon saw that through laying of the apostles' hands, laying on of the apostles' hands, and when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. Mm. He offered them money. You cannot make this up. Isn't that what the pastors do? You know how they offer money? They go to these cemetery schools. They get these degrees of theology. Masters in cemetery school. They come and bewitch the people. That's what they do. Go ahead. Say, give me also this power. Mm. That on whomsoever I lay hands. He may receive the Holy Ghost. Because that's what they do in the Christian church, Muslim. They be put laying people, bearing hands on the people, and the person will be sitting on a wheelchair. They say, you see, he's walking. You understand? All of a sudden, he stand up, he's a walkist. You understand? Because this is what they are followed. They have the devil on them. Read. But Peter said unto him, mm. Thy money perish with thee. You die with that money. Go ahead. Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. That's what these pastors are doing. Read. Thou art neither part nor lot in, his, in this matter. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to do with this. Come on. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Stop right there. For thy what now? For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. So what was the apostle Peter telling him? You've got the devil on you. Because remember says, when he was healed, he says what? He was in his right mind. So Simon here was not in his right mind, so he had the devil on him. You understand? Go ahead. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, mm -hmm. and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Go ahead. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. He was bitter. So when the pastors see us on the streets we teach, they are bitter. How many of them send the congregants to come and challenge us on the streets? Many. You understand? Because they were bitter. Or yo, we're spending all this money. We're rich. But guess what? They, these, these, these brothers, they have nothing. But guess what? They understand the scriptures. And they, you cannot touch them when it comes to this. So what spirit are they in? The spirit of bitterness. Go ahead. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness mm -hmm. and in the bond of iniquity. Read. Then answered Simon and said, Read. Pray ye to the Lord for me, mm. that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Stop. You see, he repented. But now, you see how heavy this verse is? Read verse 24 again. Then we go to Acts chapter 8 verse 24. Listen good. Then answered Simon and mm. said, Watch this. Pray ye to the Lord for me. Pray to the Lord for me. Go ahead. That none of these things which he has spoken come upon me. Stop. So you do some evil stuff. You don't want to listen to the council and whatnot. And you say, to hell with you niggas, I'm out. Or I'm not going to listen to, I'm not going to listen to nobody. The things that we prophesy when we give you the counsel, you don't listen to it. Guess what's going to happen to you? So Simon understood very quickly, listen, hey, pray for, to the Lord for me that these things which I was spoken, they don't come upon me. So now, when you do some evil stuff, you don't want to repent, or unless you stub on you rebellious, the things that come out of the council, they are going to surely happen unto you. So Simon understood that, man. <laughs> Simon understood that thing. You're going to say that they are wishing death upon No! Repent or die. You say, no. They are wishing death upon me. And then you don't repent. And then guess what? The first thing that happens is not death. It's sickness. Whatever that may come upon you is because you didn't repent. You said to hell with these niggas. I'm not going to listen to what you got to say. Who you think you are? 
and the things that they, the, the prophets speak, they happen unto you. Then you get mad. You say, we wishing death upon you. Hmm. Okay. Now, let's go back. Go back to X, uh, Go back to John 14. Verse 26. Chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 26. Listen good. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, right? whom the Father will send in my name, Come on. he shall teach you all things uh -huh. and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. You see this? So, guess what? That's why we read, go back to Exodus 20, verse 8, because I know some of you already forgot. <laughs> Exodus 20 and verse 8. Chapter of Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Come on. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So what's going to bring the Sabbath day back to your remembrance? The Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord. So our people that don't keep the Sabbath day, but they say I've got the Holy Ghost on me. Guess what? They've got an unholy demon on them. Read. Six days shall thou labor. Because these are ordinary days. That's why it says six days shall thou labor. These are ordinary days that we read in Genesis 1, 5, 8, 13, 19, 23, and 31. Go ahead. Six days shalt thou live mm. and do all thy work. Because these are ordinary days. Go ahead. But the seventh day. But the seventh day. Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. You notice during Genesis 2, it didn't say Sabbath. It just said the seventh day. Genesis 2. Go back. Genesis 2, verse 2 and 3. I'm going to show you. You didn't say that. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 2. Come on. And on the seventh day, on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. Mm. And he rested on the seventh day. He did what? And he rested on the seventh day. The seventh day. Come on. From all his work, which mm. he had made. Read. And God blessed the seventh day. He did what? And God blessed the seventh day. Read. And sanctified it. Because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. You see, that doesn't say the Sabbath. It just says the seventh day. Now, Exodus 20, read verse 9. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Come on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. That's how we know. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Go ahead. In it thou shalt not do any work, mm. thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. Uh -huh. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, because what he was, what was he doing? He was laboring. Just like we must labor for those six days. Read. The sea. And all that in them is. Come on. And rested the seventh day. Mm. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. He did what? Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. Because it's a high day. It's not an ordinary day. So he blessed the seventh day. Come on. And hallowed it. He blessed the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. That's why it's not an ordinary day. Yeah, that's why precept must be upon precept. Because you read Genesis 2, verse 1 through 3. You say, no, you see, that's the Sabbath. The Negro is like, no, you don't say the Sabbath. You just get the precept here and go right back where you was. You understand? Yes, so now, give me Exodus 16. Read verse 2. The book of Exodus chapter 16, verse 2. Listen good. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses mm. and Aaron in the wilderness. The, you see, this murmuring business that's the big one. This one right here? Man. Read. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. Mm, mm, mm. When we sat by the flesh pots. By the what now? By the flesh pots. You see, they are, they are remembering how they good they had it. And remember, these were the taskmasters. These are the ones that had high positions in Egypt. They say, yo, I remember that thing, man. Go ahead. And when we did, and when we did eat bread to the food. You see? When we did eat bread to the food. You see, listen, man. Our people, man. Man. Go ahead. For he have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Why? Now, now, you see, you know when I was going over this? 
He did not hit me. I'm like, yo, you know the reason why today up in the congregation? Because we said, like, we read the scriptures, hey, you're not supposed to be working on the Sabbath, man. You understand? Tell them, oh, yeah, I'm not working on the Sabbath. Or I'm going to take a pay cut. So what's the response? Read that verse again. They will go, excellent. I'm going to show you that we're the same people that were back there, we're back today. Read again verse 3, man. They will come Exodus chapter 16 verse 3. Mm. And the children of Israel said unto them, Go ahead. We took God. We had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pots, and when, and when we did eat bread to the food, right. for ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Stop. So now, well, they want to say, but we wanna be, we're going to go hungry. What about my bills? What about my this? You know, ever since I came into the congregation, you know, the Lord, I, I want to do this. The Lord said, no, you can't. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. You understand that? He said, you know, I used to just go, I, I do whatever I wanted. Now when I'm coming to the congregation, there's so many restrictions. I don't have freedom of movement and whatnot. This is them. You understand? This is them right here. Understand that, man. You need to leak. listen, you must immerse yourself in this Bible and take yourself back there while you are here in these last days. And understand Lord, what was going on here. Because they were blaming Moses. They were saying, you know what, man? Pella, you know, before I came into the truth, you know, I, things used to be good. I never used to run out of money. Now I'm in the truth. I'm always running out of money. We're always broke. What's going on? So now you start to blame the truth. You blaming the most high that we don't have no money. So it's the same thing here. He says, What? You brought us into this, what into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. They are blaming Moses and Aaron for this. You can relate. You understand? Keep reading. That's wrong. Right? Then said the Lord unto Moses, uh -huh. Behold. And guess what? The people also that are going to be raising this up is your wives too. Yeah, they're going to tell you, you know what, man? Yo, we used to have this type of man. Now we don't. They always be asking for arms. Yes. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Let's read the Bible. Hold on a second. I know we're ruffling feathers up in here. Give me Exodus, man. Exodus 35, read verse 4. Yes, read that thing. The book of Exodus, chapter 35, verse 4. Watch this. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, mm. saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Watch this. Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whosoever is of a willing heart. Stop. Whosoever is what now? Whosoever is of a willing heart. Whosoever is of a willing heart. Go ahead. Let him bring it an offering of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Gold and silver. Red. And brass, Go ahead. And blue mm -hmm. and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red and better skin than cheated wood. Go ahead. And oil for the light and spices for the anointing. When he oil. says oil for the light, we ask for arms. Hey, we need to pay for electricity. The electricity is running out. We need arms to pay for the electricity. Brothers and sisters, be mammary. We're reading here. Because this was for the building when we were in the wilderness. Ne? So now, guess what? We're in captivity, man. We're not rich. Read. And spices for, for anointing oil. Mm, listen, uh, we need arms for the food for the Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, be mammary within them. Read. And for the sweet incense. Uh, we need incense. How about that? Brothers were complaining in so as well. One kg, it was 1.2. <laughs> they were just murmuring, right? Not so long ago before we started the class. Not with a willing spirit, no. It didn't come to mind, oh, by the way. I used to buy Timberlands. How much is Timberlands? <laughs> 1 point something, right? But you can't spend 1 point something to buy incense for the Lord. But the Negro be complaining about uh, 1 kg of 1.2. But he bought Timberlands for 
You see? You see, you're not thinking, man. Because me, I'm hearing it, I'm like, mm, back in the wilderness again. I'm listening, I gave you time to speak, because, you know, don't interrupt a man in his speech. <laughs> so I kept going, I'm like, I want to see where this is going, man. <laughs> Read that verse again. The verse 9. The book of Exodus, chapter 35, verse 9. Read. And on its stones. Go ahead. And stones to be set for the evil mm. and for the breastplate. The garments. Mm. We need garments. How many times have been said we need new garments? You see, the sisters, they got new garments now, praise the Lord. It's time for us to get new garments as well. Come on. And every wise hearted among you shall mm. come and make all that the Lord has commanded. Now, you see what we're reading here? Now jump down. Um, read verse verse 21. The book of Leviticus, chapter 35, verse 21. Uh -huh. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing. Whom his spirit did what now? Whom his spirit made willing. Come on. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle. To the what now? To the work of the tabernacle. We need things for the congregation, man. This thing is not going to be built on good looks and fair speeches. That's not going to happen. We have to dig into our pocket to do this. Rent must be paid. Where did the money come from? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, rent must be paid. Go ahead. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. Read. And for all his saints. Mm. And for the holy garment. For the what now? And for the holy garment. Read on. Watch this. And they came, both men and women. Stop. Both what now? Both men and women. Yes. Both men and women. You got money in your pocket. You better help this congregation to push forward. Otherwise, the Lord will take all your sins. You will have nothing. You must all because when we were in the world, it was all about us. When you work, it was about you. Now today, when you are in this truth, when you work is about your nation and you. Understand that, man. Go ahead. And they came, both men and women, mm. as many as were willing hearted. As were what now? As many as were willing hearted. Read. And brought bracelets. And earrings, mm. and rings, and tablets, all jewels of gold. Mm. Every man that offered offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. You see that the best for the Most High. They offered gold. When you come, God is saying, "Demo is saying, I'm offered." No. <laughs> you understand? So, but my point is this: I'm not saying, worry, we don't take anything that you offer. My point is this: in the world, you, know, you used to deck yourself beautifully. But when you come into this truth, you don't want your nation to look the same. You don't want your nation to look glorious. Come on, men and women. Okay, what verse did we go? Exodus 16. Yeah, go back. Exodus 16. Uh, read verse 4 now. Exodus chapter 16, verse 4. Come on. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, mm. and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Every day. Go ahead. That I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. The Mosa is always proving us, man. Is I'm gonna prove them. I get they are complaining. They are complaining, saying there's no there's no bread. You understand? We wanna eat bread the same way we ate to the full in, in Egypt. There is no problem. I'm gonna rain bread. There's going to be bread coming from the sky. Men. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, they shall prepare that which they bring in. Mm. And it shall be twice as much as they get a day. He says it shall be twice as much on the sixth day, Sabbath Eve. It shall be twice as much. Jump down to verse 22. The book of Exodus chapter 16, verse 22. Mm. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omas for one man. Right. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Right. Go ahead. And he said unto them, uh -huh. this, is, this is that which the Lord has said. Go ahead. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Because remember, the Sabbath is a day of rest. 
Read. Beg that which he, he will beg today. Come on. And feed that he will, that which he will feed. So you must beg and boil whatever it is that you want to boil on a Friday. So on a Friday you gather twice as much. More than you usually do on other days because you are prepping for the Sabbath day. You understand? Go ahead. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Read. And they laid it up and they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. Read. And Moses said, Is that today? For today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Read. Today he shall not find it in the field. Six days. Meaning today you shall not find it in the field as always. Meaning from Sunday to Friday. Sunday to Friday says every day for six days you go out to gather it. You understand? You eat to the full. The sixth day you eat twice as much. But on this day you're not going to go out to gather it as always. Because it's the Sabbath day is a day of rest. Read. Six days. Six days he shall gather it, mm. but on the seventh day. Because these six days, these are ordinary days. Read. Which is the Sabbath. In it, there shall be none. There shall be none, meaning nobody must go out to gather it. Read. Meaning don't go. Today is translated into what? Don't go to the shops and be buying groceries and whatnot. Push it thoroughly. No, don't be doing that. You understand? Go ahead. And it came to pass. That they went out some of the people on the seventh day. You cannot make it up. There's always that wicked Negro that said, No, me, I'm going to go to the shops and be shopping groceries on, on this wise. Read. For together, and they found none. You see, they, because the, the Lord told them, You're not going to find anything, man, when you go out there. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm. How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? Because why? They were being rebellious. This is rebellion right here. Read. See, for that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. You see that? So he's making it plain. He's giving you on the Sabbath the bread of two days. Twice as much. Read. Abide ye every man in his place. Mm. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. To go and gather it. Read. So the people rested on the seventh day. So the people rested on what day? So the people rested on the seventh day. What verse you at? Verse 37. Oh, praise to the Most High. Give me to 25 verse 12. So the people rested on the seventh day. As according to the law. We just read it. No several work. Don't be going out to get paid on this day. You understand? The 25 verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 12. Come on. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it. Do what now? Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it. Uh huh. Go ahead. As the Lord thy God has commanded thee. You see that? As the Lord thy God has commanded thee. Because this is a commandment. Read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Mm. But the seventh day. But the, the reason why six days you shall labor and do all thy work. Is because the six days are these are ordinary days. They were not sanctifiers nor hallowed. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. You must not do any servile work where you are gonna get paid. We're not saying go and work for a non-profit. <laughs> the Negro. You understand? Go ahead, doctors without borders. No, I'm going over there. No. Come on. Thou. Not thy son, not thy daughter, not thy man servant, mm. not thy maid servant, not thy ox, not thine ass, nor any, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate, uh -huh. that thy man servant and thy maid servant may rest as well as thou. You see, the same way you resting, they must also rest. Next verse, come on. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt. Stop. The Lord is reminding you, say, listen. Don't you you must not because in Egypt there was no Sabbath. We didn't keep the Sabbath day holy. We didn't. Because we were, we were slaves. So we were not allowed to observe the Sabbath when we were in Egypt. The same way in spiritual Egypt, we are not allowed to keep the Sabbath day holy. That's why they say instead of saying, Don't observe the Sabbath, they say we're gonna ordain a new day. 
So that we talk a lemma, Muslim. You're going to wake up and say, wait, why don't they want me to, to congregate on this day? What about this day? They say, no, just change the day. Mm. Make it to be Sunday. Mm. You understand? The first day of the week. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 15. And remember that thou wast the servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand, and a stretch out arm. Right. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath he day. He commanded us to keep the Sabbath day, <coughs> to keep it holy. Now, keep pay close attention here. Give me Leviticus 23 verse 1. Leviticus 23 verse 1. We're still dealing with the Sabbath, man. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 1. Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, mm. concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning the what? Concerning the feast of the Lord. The Sabbath is the feast of the Lord. Come on. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. When we come together, it says it's a day of rest. Rest from your several work where you get paid, nine to five. Rest from your nine to five. So when, because you might say, no, it's a day where I just sleep the whole day. No. It's the day when you leave from wherever you are, you go to the congregation to congregate with your brethren. Understand that? No, I just watch online. Mm -mm. He says you must travel. You understand? And go and come convocate with the people. Read. Right? Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, right. Concerning the feast of the Lord, Come on. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, mm. even these are my feasts. Come on. Six days shall work be done. Six days shall work be done. It's repetition over and over. Go ahead. But the seventh day. But the what now? But the seventh day right. is the Sabbath of rest. The seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Read. And holy convocation. And what now? And holy convocation. No, I'll just sleep all day and watch TV. And holy convocation. And watch omnibus. And holy convocation. Yeah, generations. Mm -mm, not on this day. Go ahead. You shall do no work therein. Mm. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dreams. Wherever you scattered, you must keep the Sabbath day. Come together. You know, many of our people that watch online, yeah, I'm talking to you. You understand? You, the, our people that watch online, they don't want to come into the congregation among, you know why? Because they know when they're among us, we're going to start to identify things they are doing wrong and they don't want to stop those things. That's why they love to watch online. They don't want to come into the congregation because when you come into the congregation, guess what? You're going to understand that you have to be taught. The, listen, when you are by yourself, you're watching online, there's no way you are moving in the right spirit. No. The most God says you must come together. But somebody watches online, he be writing precepts. Memorizing precepts. No, that don't mean nothing. Gather here, you can watch for the first time and say, hey, where they at? Let me go and congregate. But you're still sitting online, you understand? It's not going to work. It's not the same. Watching online and coming together with the people is not the same thing. Is as convocate. Mm. Go ahead. Verse 4. Mm. These are the feasts of the Lord. Go ahead. Even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons. In their seasons. Now watch this. Give me the book of Nehemiah 13, 15. We're still dealing with the Sabbath. The Lord says you must do no several work. Don't be working on this day. Because it's the Lord's Sabbath. Okay. Nehemiah 13. Read verse 12. No, 13, 15. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 15. Come on. In those days, so I in Judah. Where? In Judah. Israelites. Mm. What, what were they doing? Keep reading. In those days, so I in Judah. Some trading wine presses on the Sabbath. They were doing what? Some trading wine presses on the Sabbath. The, you see that? They were making wine. When you trade wine, what are you making? Gun? You're making wine. Because why? They love to drink. You understand? Why? Now they don't. The Esau said, no. You don't have to do all of that. Just come to the shop and buy it. You don't have to trade it like you've been doing back in the day. I've got it ready made for you. Just come and buy it. Read. And bringing in sheaves and lading us. Mm -hmm. You see that? Chariots. They be driving these delivery vans and whatnot. Uber Eats. You understand? 
with these motorbikes of them. No, not my scooter. Read. As also wine, grapes, and figs. Mm. And all is as wine, grapes, and figs. Today, tomatoes, avocado. You see them on the street corners. Read. And all manner of burdens mm. which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Watch this. And I testified against them. In the day wherein they sold vigils. In the day wherein they did what now? They sold vigils. They sold virals. Food. Read again, man. In the day when they did what? In the day wherein they sold vigils. Uh-huh. This is food. Okay. Now hold this. Give me that when he says you must not, um, we must not buy it on the Sabbath. Yeah, read it. Yeah, that's it right there. Watch this. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, verse 31. Come on. And if the people of the land bring way or any video. Or any what? Or any video. Because remember what we read. What were they, how did they get the virus? Go back. Nehemiah 13, 15. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 15. Because how did they find these things? How did they find them? The law says. On the Sabbath, you see it says, if the people of the land bring wear or any virus on the Sabbath day to sell. So, who are the people that brought it? Go back to Nehemiah 13, 15. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 18, verse 15. Because it wasn't just the other nations doing this. Our people was doing this too. Read. In those days, so I in Judah, some trading wine presses on the Sabbath, mm. and bringing in sheep, and lading asses, mm. there's also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold wheat. Wherein they did what? Wherein they sold wheat. That's it. Wherein they sold these virals. What about the virals? Grapes, wine, figs. You understand? And all manner of burdens. Now go back to 1031. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, verse 31. <clears throat> and if the people of the land bring way or any vigils on the Sabbath day to sell. To do what? To sell. Because remember, it says they brought those things to Jerusalem for to sell. Read. That we will not buy it of them on the Sabbath mm. or on the holy day. Go ahead. And that we will, will leave the seventh year and the ex the extension of every day. Because every seventh year, we, we wouldn't farm. Because the Lord says, give the land rest. Okay, go back. Nehemiah 13, read verse 16. Now we understand the things that they bought to, they brought in Jerusalem to sell. Okay. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 18, verse 15. 16. Sorry, verse 16. Come on. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein. Now you see, he says also. So in AD, because who did they see? Which example they saw Israelites doing it? They say, okay, we're going to do it as well. Because you see, the Jews are doing it. They are selling in Jerusalem. That means we also can come to Jerusalem and sell on the Sabbath. You understand that, right? So that means that the nations, they look at us and look at black people be what we're doing. Because who's filling the malls and all that on the Sabbath is our people. Okay, come on. There dwelt men of Tyree, also they in, mm -hmm. which brought fish mm -hmm. and all men of way. You see what they did? They brought fish and all men of way. Read. And so on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah mm -hmm. and in Jerusalem. Because who did they see? Remember during the time when the apostles were being persecuted? Before, well, we, before Herod can kill the apostle James, what was, what was happening? Because our people started doing that first. And then after that, that's when Herod came in and, and killed uh, James with the sword. Read. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah. Read. And said unto them, what evil thing is that that ye do? Go ahead. And profane the Sabbath day. Did not your father... No, no, and what? And what? And profane the what? And profane the Sabbath day. And profane the Sabbath day. And defile it. Come on. Did not your father stop? And did not our God bring all this evil upon us? Mm. And upon this city? Go ahead. Yet he bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. So Nehemiah, for is letting you know, the reason why the Lord brought so much 
destruction to the 12 tribes of Israel, it was the first commandment that was given to us. The first high day. The breaking of the Sabbath day. Because that day was given to us on the seventh day to tell us that, listen, this rest day right here is the rest day of your future. Where you're going to be in the kingdom forever. So the Lord says, okay, you're defiling the Sabbath day. That means you don't want the kingdom. You don't want to get delivered then. Right? And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dug before the Sabbath. Be meaning what? The Sabbath, this is Sabbath Eve now. Friday night. Friday in the evening. In the, in the afternoon towards the evening and all that. Uh -huh, go ahead. I commanded that the gates should be shut uh -huh. and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. Meaning what? After the Sabbath, Saturday sundown. They can only be open Saturday sundown after. After the fact. Go ahead. And some of my servants said, I at the gate. Mm. And there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. Because, listen, they were so bold. Né? They were even coming in Jerusalem to come and sell the fish and all this stuff because they saw our people do it. Read. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of wares lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. So today, remember, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Where are we? We are in the classes right now, in the ghettos. Who are the merchants and sellers? Pick and pay, shop right, you understand? Boxer, spa, spaza shops and whatnot. You see Muhammad and all these Arabs who so-called my friend, they open their spaza shops all over the place. You understand? Go ahead. Then I testified against them and said, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Why not he about the war? Read. If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. You see that? Our forefathers says, I want to give you the beats. If I find you here, I'm going to give you the beats. Read. From that time forth, can they no more on the Sabbath? All oh, praises to that's some beautiful stuff right there, man. Okay, now, give me the book of Exodus 35 and 1. So, no selling, no buying on the Sabbath day. No working. You understand? On the Sabbath day. No cooking on the Sabbath day. Exodus 35. Read verse 1. The book of Exodus chapter 35 verse 1. Read. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel. Read. And said unto them, These are the ways which the Lord hath commanded that he should do them. Read. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. To the what? A Sabbath of rest to the Lord. To the Lord. Come on. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. You see, that's why many of our people, you know how many people die on the Sabbath? Friday night, <coughs> Saturday, during the day. So many accidents are taking place. You know why? Because they are breaking the Sabbath. Go ahead. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. You shall do what now? Ye shall kindle no fire. Throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So the Lord is saying, don't kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. Now, now what we're reading here, I'm going to come back to this later on, if it be the Lord's will. Now, give me the book of Exodus 15 verse 32. No, no, Numbers, Numbers. Numbers 15 verse 32. It says, don't kindle fire, right? For you to kindle fire, what do you need? You need to gather wood for to kindle the fire. Watch this. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 32. Read. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. The Negro. You see what he's doing? We never pray. Mm. Go ahead. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron. And unto all the congregation. Because remember, he went out. He was not supposed to go out to gather sticks to make fire because you shall kindle no fire. You understand? On the Sabbath day. Read. And they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. They're going through cancer. What needs to happen to this guy? Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm. The man 
shall be surely put to death. This is, they did not, they were not confused on what needs to be done. He says, the man shall surely be put to death. Go ahead. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. Mm. And all the congregation brought him without the camp. Right. And they stoned him with stones that he, and he died. Right. As the Lord commanded Moses. So this is what the Lord commanded Moses. But the, the, the Moses is so merciful. He said, okay. He died because Moses didn't know what needs to be done here. You understand? So the Mosai what introduced a statute on this wise. Next verse. Go ahead. I mean, you see the laws, they are interconnected. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, right. Speak unto the children of Israel, and beat them, that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. You see that? He said, listen. Let's, I'm going to put up a statute. A statute that they might, but they do what now? And beat them, that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments right. throughout their generation, mm -hmm. and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Because remember what we read in Exodus 20, verse 8. It says what? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Next verse. Go ahead. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, mm. that ye may look upon it. And do what? And that ye may look upon it. And remember. And what? And remember. And what? And remember. And remember. Because what did it say? It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So this will bring it to your remembrance. Understand that, man. Go ahead. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. And do them. Mm. That he seek not after your own heart. Because that's what he did in verse 32. He was following his own heart. Right? And your own eyes. Mm. After which he used to go a holy. Go ahead. That he may remember. That he may what? That he may remember. Come on. To do all my commandments mm -hmm. and be holy unto your God. Go ahead. I am the Lord your God, mm. which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Come on. To be your God. I am the Lord your God. The most high God is a genius, man. So it's like, listen, I'm going to introduce something that's going to help you remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Fringes. Not only that, but these fringes will help you remember all the other laws as well. You understand that? No, because had he actually mentioned this is specific to fringes, you understand, it's specific to the Sabbath, that means what about the other laws? You understand that, right? Okay, now watch this. Give me Amos 8 verse 5. I'm going to show you something. The book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 5. Remember what we read. Give me Nehemiah 10, 31 first. You see, the Sabbath day, man, is very important, man. The Sabbath day, it brings in all these other laws. Watch this. Nehemiah 10, 31. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, verse 31. Come on. And if the people of the land bring way or any beetles on the Sabbath day to sell. To do what? To sell. Come on. That we will not buy it up. Buy it of them on the Sabbath mm. or on the holy day. Go ahead. That we would leave the seventh year and exception of every day. Now, give me Amos 8, verse 5. Now, the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 5. Come on. Say, when will the new moon be gone? This is Israel speaking. When will the new moon be gone? Go ahead. That we may sell corn. That we may what? That we may sell corn. Go ahead. And the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat. Mm. Making the ephah small. Go ahead. And the shekel, the shekel great. Making the ephah small and the shekel great. Go ahead. And falsifying the balances by deceit. Stop right there. So they could not wait for the new moon to be gone that they may sell. Because on the new moon, you don't sell. Why? Because it's Sabbath. You see how it connects? Yes, sir. Read it again, verse 5. The book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 5. Go ahead. Say when will the new moon be gone? Go ahead. That we may sell corn. Ray. And the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, mm. making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit. Watch this. So now is they said, when will the new moon be gone? Why are they asking such a question? Now give me Genesis 1, verse 14. And beginning at Moses. Genesis 1, 14. This is the fourth day, is it? Uh -huh. Ready? The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 14. Come on. 
And God said, let there be light in the firmament of heaven mm. to divide the day from the night. Go ahead. And let them and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Right. And let them be for light. For light. Let them be for light. For light. Light. Come on. In the firmament of heaven. Right. To give light upon the earth. Mm. And it was so. Come on. And God made great, two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. Right. And the lesser light to rule the night. Mm. He made the stars also. So sun, moon, and stars. The fourth day. Go ahead. And God set them in the firmament of in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Come on. And to rule over the day and over the night. To divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Mm. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So now, this is when the moon, the sun and moon were created. And stars, right? Now, give me the book of 2nd Ezra 6 verse 45. Start of verse 38. 2nd Ezra 6 38. 2nd Ezra 6 verse 38. Second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 38. Come on. And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation, mm. even the first day, and said, and said it thus, mm. let heaven and earth be made. Let heaven and earth be made. Go ahead. And thy word was a perfect work. And thy word was a perfect work. So, on the fourth day, the moon, the sun, the moon, and stars, guess what? They were full. Well, these are new. They've never been made. The sun was new. What did it look like? Bright. The moon was new. What did it look like? So that's why it says, thy word was a perfect work. It was the first, the first time when the Lord created the moon. It was full of light. So was the sun, so was the stars. Jump down to verse 45. Verse 45. Mm -hmm. Upon the first day, Thou commandest that the sun should shine. Should what? Should shine. Uh -huh. And the moon give her light. You see that? Go ahead. And the stars should be in order. Come on. And gave them charge to do this unto men that was to be made. Upon no, no, that's it on that. Read verse 46 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 46. Come on. And gave them a charge to do this unto men. And he did what now? And gave us them charge to do service unto men. So, because they were created to give service unto men. You understand? To serve us. Okay, Sarah 43. Sarah 43. Read verse 6. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 43, verse 6. Come on. He made the moon also to serve in a season for a declaration of time. This was the fourth day. Okay, go ahead. And a sign of the world. And a sign of the world, the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. From the moon is the sign of feast. So when you see the full moon, you must know a feast is coming upon us. You understand? And that moon, when it's full, is also a feast day. Go ahead. A light that decreases in a perfection. In a what? In a perfection. Remember, it says what? In the beginning of their creation, thy word was a perfect work. You understand? A light that decreases in her perfection. Right? The month is called, is called after a name. You see that the word month comes from the word moon. Month, moon, they are interchangeable. Right? Increasing wonderfully in a change. You see that? That's when it goes through cycles. But when it was first created, it was full, and then it decreases, and then goes to what? The new cycle. 14 days or more is the new moon. 14 days or more is a what? Is that over again? Come on. Being an instrument of the armies above. Being an instrument of the what? Of the armies above. Because the moon, the moon is a military base. You understand? Of the angels. Man. God's armies, they're up there. Go ahead. Shining in the firmament of heaven. Doing what now? Shining in the firmament of heaven. Read. The beauty of heaven. Mm. The glory of the star. Go ahead. An ornament giving light in the highest places of the Lord. Read. At the commandment of the Holy One, they will stand in their order. They will what? They will stand in their order. They will stand in their order. Come on. And never faint in their watch. They will never faint in their watch. That's why they go through cycles. 
You understand? They doing what they were created for. Now watch this. Give me. Um, hmm. You know what? Jump up to verse seven. No eight. Verse chapter forty-three, verse eight. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter forty-three, verse eight. Come on. The man is called after a name. The what? The man is called after a name. Now I want you to pay close attention. It says the man is called after a name. The word man comes from the word moon. Okay, Exodus twelve, verse one. You see, some of you don't know, you don't seem to see what's going on here. We read in the Sabbath, right? The fringes came into, 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 into the picture. We read in the Sabbath, the new moon came into the picture. We read in the Sabbath, guess what? The Passover is coming into the picture. Read what you got. Exodus 12 and 1. Come on. Exodus chapter 12 verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Right? This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. So remember, it says, the month, the moon, is called after her name. The month is called after her name, right? That's correct. Remember, he says what? Verse 2 again. This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. So this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. So this moon that you see up in the sky, it's new, shall be unto you. That's how you tell the beginning of every month of the year. Read. It shall be the first month of the year to you. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So what are we reading here? Give me that thing to 20, 16 and what? So because the full moon, then we count what? 14 days. Then is the Passover. Come on, read it. Then we come to Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. Come on. Observe the month of Abib. Observe the month of Abib. Come on. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. Read. For in the month of Abib, mm. the Lord thy God brought thee, brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. So the month of Abib is beginning, is, is end of March, beginning April. You understand? So that's the first month of the year. So now we're reading about the Sabbath. But now you learning about the new moon. We reading about the Sabbath. You learning about the Passover. You see how this works, man. We reading about the Sabbath day. You learning about the fringes. This is some heavy stuff, man. Go back. Exodus twelve, verse two again. The book of Exodus chapter twelve, verse two. Come on. This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. Right. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh huh. Speak ye unto unto all the congregation of Israel. Because right. remember, here in verse two is the new moon. You understand that? Remember, it says, when will the new moon be gone that we may what that we may sell forth wheat. They wanted the new moon to be done because they could not sell on the new moon. Because why? The new moon is a Sabbath. You understand that? Yes, mm. Now, give me that in uh, Numbers 10. Verse 10. Let's expound on the new moon. Numbers 10, verse 10. Yes, the book of Numbers, chapter 10, verse 10. Come on. Also, in the day of your gladness, mm -hmm. and in your Solomon days, and in the beginning, in the beginnings of your months. And in the beginnings of your months. How do we know the beginnings of our months? We look at the new moon in Exodus 12, verse 2. Right? Ye shall blow with the trumpet mm. over your burnt offering. Right? And over the sacrifices of your peace offering. Mm. That they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Give me Psalms 81 verse 3. The book of Psalms chapter 81 verse 3. Watch this. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. Go ahead. In the time appointed. Mm. On our solemn feast day. On our solemn feast day. Go ahead. But this was a statute for Israel, mm. a law of God of Jacob. A law of the God of Jacob, go ahead. A law of the God of Jacob. Read. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony. 
when you went when you went out through the land of Egypt, where I had a language that I understood not. So what we reading here is what the Lord is teaching us, uh, us about what the new moon. The new moon is a Sabbath day. That's why in Amos eight is letting you know because our people could not buy and sell on that day because they wanted the new moon to pass because it was a Sabbath. According to Nehemiah 10, 31. You understand that, right? Yes, Exodus 31, verse 12. The book of Exodus, chapter 31, verse 12. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Read. Verily my Sabbath he shall keep. Mm. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation. That he may know that I am the Lord that that doth sanctify you. You see that? So he says we must keep the Sabbath. Read. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. This is what we read in Exodus. This is what we read in Numbers. So meaning at this time, the Lord is letting us know. You should know this. You understand? Because in Exodus 20, Exodus 16... He already told us what we need to do and not do on the Sabbath. Go ahead. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Mm. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh day, but in the seventh, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Right? Holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day shall surely be put to death. He keep repeating it over and over. Because right now, we're not going to stone you. The Lord will be the one to do it. Read. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. He's letting you know. The Sabbath was made for who? The children of Israel. Read. To observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. For a perpetual covenant. For an everlasting covenant. Read. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Read. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Come on. And on the seventh day he rested. And was refreshed. All praises to the most high God of heaven and earth. Give me Matthew 12. Matthew 12, verse 1 and 2. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 1. Come on. At, at that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day. On the what? On the Sabbath day. Remember now, we were in the new. We went to the old, we back now. Remember we, wrote, we read the law and in the prophets. We read Ezekiel. Pay close attention, follow along here. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 12 verse 1. Come on. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn. And his disciples were, ha were hungered. Mm -hmm. And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. So they began to eat. Go ahead, watch this. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. The, you see, these people were crazy. And remember, the scribes and Pharisees, remember, they sat in Moses' seat. They were supposed to, they knew the law, but they were tempting him, testing him. That's why when you teach the Sabbath, Christians will take you here. When they don't win here, what do they call? The Apostle Paul, of course. As if the Apostle Paul is going to teach anything different. You understand? Get the law. You told me 23, 25. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 25. Come on. When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor. Mm, of thy what? Of thy neighbor. The standing corn of thy neighbor. Go ahead. Then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand. You must do what now? Then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine, with thine hand. So it's a commandment. He says you must do it. Go ahead. But thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. So don't be plugging it out and putting it in a bag. He says don't do that. You pluck, you stand right here, you eat. When you're full, be on your way. You understand? That's the law. So now go back, Matthew 12, read verse 5. The book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 5. Come on. Oh, have you not read in the law 
how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. Read again. Double Remember, one. now I want you to pay attention here. We read in Exodus 35, he says, You shall kindle no fire. So don't forget that what we read. Okay? Matthew 12 and 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 5. Come on. Or have you not read in the law mm. how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? So you see that? It says the priests in the temple, they profane the Sabbath, but they are blameless. How? How are they blameless? But they are profaning the Sabbath, but they are blameless. Because remember, when you read here, um, the pastors, they break the Sabbath and they read this. They justify them breaking the Sabbath and they read it. They say, you see, the priests were profaning the Sabbath and they were blameless. Because why? Christ fulfilled the law. You know why they say that? Read the next verses. Yes, sir. Verse oh. 6. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 6. Come on. But I say unto you, that in this place is one greater than the temple. Mm. Go ahead. But if he had known, he had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Right? You would not have condemned the guilty. Stop. You see, they will read this and say, but you know, we are under Christ now. We are under grace. So that's what they will read 6 and 7 and 8. They say, you see, the priests were, you see, they were not put to death. Why? Because they are under Christ now. He says, now we are under Christ, we're not going to be stoned and all that. They don't understand because the key is what? I will have mercy and not what? I will have mercy and not sacrifice. So what was Christ talking about? The law of animal sacrifice. But they missed it. They didn't catch it. You understand? But why were they in the world? Why were they profaning the Sabbath? But they were blameless. Hmm. Give me the book of Numbers now. Numbers 28 and 1. The numbers 28 verse 1. The book of Numbers chapter 28 verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Read. Command the children of Israel and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifice made by fire. For a sweet savor unto the Lord shall he observe to offer unto me in their due season. Read. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which it shall offer unto the Lord. Two lambs of the first year without spot day by day. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this what now? Two lambs of the first year without spot day by day. No, no, six days. Two lambs of the first year without spot day by day. Day by day. That means every day. Read. For a continual bent offering. For a what now? For a continual bent offering. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. Uh -huh. It is a continual bent offering. It is a continual Bent offering day by day. Read. Which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. Jump down to verse 9. Pay attention. Verse 9. Read. And on the Sabbath day. And on the what? And on the Sabbath day. Come on. Two lambs of the first year without spot. Mm -hmm. And two tenth deals of flour for a, for a meat offering. For a what? For a meat offering. This is on the Sabbath. Read. Mingled with oil mm. and the drink offering they offer. Come on. This is the bent offering. This is the what? This is the bent offering. The bent, bent, bent offering. Come on. Of every Sabbath. Of every what? Of every Sabbath. Read. Besides the continual bent offering and his drink offering. The reason why they were blameless because this was the law. This was the commandment method. This was, that's why they entered, they were blameless. Because this was the law. This was the commandment of the most high God of heaven and earth. You understand? Now, watch this. That's why it's a feast day and it happened on the seventh Sabbath. It's the law. It's a feast. We can cook, but we cannot buy and sell. You understand that? Because it's the law. You understand that, right? Okay, now, go back to Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12. Now, read verse 9. Then we go Matthew chapter 12, verse 9. Watch this. 
And when verse 8, verse 8. We didn't read verse 8. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 8. Come on. For the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day. Because he's letting you he's letting them know. Listen, I'm here now. I'm gonna tell you what to do. You understand? If you thought this is not that way, it's this way. But he didn't come up with that. Oh, no, he read the law and the prophets, man. That's why he told them here, he says, what? Uh, one greater than the temple is here. Which temple? The one that we had in the, in the tabernacle with Moses. So when he says one greater than the temple, which temple was he making reference to himself? Okay, go ahead, verse 9. Watch this. And when he was departed then, he went into their synagogue. Mm. And behold, there was a man which had his hand with him. Because remember, when they get destroyed here, guess where they go? They will read verse 9 and say, you see? But yo, Christ was healing on the Sabbath. Like, really? Listen, they are so predictable, man. Verse 9. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 9. And when he departed then, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand with us. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day mm. that they might accuse him? That you see? That they might act. That's the whole the only reason why they were asking. They did it so they can accuse him. They can catch him out. You ever remember there was this brother that came to Ken? Are you saying? Are you saying what a, the, the, the white people will not get the kingdom? Is that what you say? Remember. Yeah, that's what the Bible is saying, idiot. Go ahead. And he said unto them, What man shall shall they be among you that shall have one sheep? And if and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, right. will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? You see that? Because remember, give me Matthew 18. Matthew 18, read verse 11. The book of Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. Come on. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Matthew 15, verse 24. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Watch this. But he answered and said, mm. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because that's who he came for. That's who he was healing. That hence the question they asked. So go back. Matthew 12, verse 11 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 11. Mm. And he said unto them, What man shall be, shall be, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? Will you not do it if one of your sheep falls into a pit? Are you not going to bring it out? Go ahead. How, how much then is a man better than a sheep? Watch this. Wherefore, is it lawful to do No, what? no, not is. It is. Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. So what was the world doing that he did? He was healing the people on the Sabbath day. The scribes and Pharisees didn't like that. Mark 3 and 1. Which means, in other words, they were not allowing the people to go to hospitals when they were sick. Because it was the Sabbath. Read. Mark 3 and 1. The book of Mark chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. And he entered again in the, into the synagogue. And there was a man there which had a, which had a withered hand. Go ahead. And they watched him. Whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day. That they might accuse him. You, they are waiting man. They are just waiting to, to find something fault. To find fault with what he was doing. Right. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand. Mm. Stand forth. And he, and he said unto them, It is lawful to do good. Is on, it? Is it? Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil? He says, Stand right here. Let me ask the question. He says, You stand right here. Let me ask you a question. Is it lawful to do good or to do evil on the Sabbath? Read. To save life or to kill. Mm. But they, they held their peace. They kept quiet. Because whatever answer they would have given, they were going to be what? They were going to be condemned in what they said. Because if they said, no, it's good, you must do evil on the Sabbath. Huh? Go, oh, you must do good. So which means I must heal him then. Go ahead. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, mm. being grieved for the hardness of their heart. You see that? Go ahead. He says unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. 
and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored holy as the other. Watch this. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians, Herodians, Herodians. with the Herodians against him, mm -hmm. how they might destroy him. You look, listen, man, these people are sick. He healed the, he healed the man, and they see him perform the miracle right before their eyes. They said, No, we need to conspire and find how we're gonna destroy this man. Now get the definition of Herodians. In the Zondervan, the definition of Herodians. Who are the Herodians? Read yes, Reading from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, page 226. Uh -huh. Herodians, a, a party mentioned. Party, a party mentioned. A party mentioned in the New Testament mm -hmm. three times. Three times in the New Testament. Go ahead. As joining with the Pharisees to oppose Jesus. You see that? So these Herodians, they joined with the Pharisees to go against the teachings of Christ. But watch this. Keep reading. Jews. You see, the Herodians were Jews. What type of Jews were these? What was their ob objective and agenda? Keep going. Jews who supported the dynasty of Herod. Mm. And therefore the rule of Rome. That's it. These were Jews that supported the white man in power. You understand? Who are they today? Still Ramaphosa is one. Heman Mashaba is one. You understand? Fusi Temba Kwa is one. Yeah, you thought I forgot. You are part of this. Herodians. These are Herodians, man. You understand? Musi Maimani. Yes, that's him also. These are Herodians. You understand? Now. Give me Luke 13, verse 10. I'm almost done. The book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 10. Come on. And he was teaching, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. On the what? On the Sabbath. On the Sabbath day. Come on. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. So 18 years, this our sister had an infirmity on her. Go ahead. And was bowed together. Well, when he says bowed together, meaning what? Her back was crooked. So she was round. So you understand that? Uh -huh. Go ahead. And, and could in no wise lift up herself. She couldn't stand straight. You understand? Go ahead. And when Jesus saw her, he called, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, Thou art loosed from thine infirmity. He says, you are loose from meaning what? She could stand straight. You understand that? Imagine, 18 years, she was like that. So when Christ saw her, he was moved with compassion. You understand? Go ahead. And he laid his hands on her. Mm -hmm. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. All praises to the most High God, man. Go ahead. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. You cannot make this stuff up. He answered with indignation. He was mad. Read. Because that Jesus has he had healed on the Sabbath day. Because he healed our mother on the Sabbath day. Keep reading. Watch this. And said unto the people, uh -huh. There are six days in which men ought to work. Mm. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. You see what they said? Read it again, read it again, verse 14. That means these scribes and Pharisees, there's a listen, it's the Sabbath, sit over there. Go ahead. The book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 14. Come on. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Read. And said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work, and, and in them therefore come and be healed. And not on the Sabbath day. You say, listen, we have six days where they can be healed. <coughs> not on the Sabbath. So now you're sick. Your mother, your father, your grandmother is sick. They said, no, she must sit over there. Wait on the morrow. Go ahead. The Lord then answered him and said, thou hypocrite. Mm. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath loot his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to water him? Exactly. For their own that was doing this, but when the rest of the nation was doing it, they're like, no. 
Read. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham. Stop right there. This is the daughter of Abraham, man. Read. Whom Satan had bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from the bond. From this bond. From this bond on the Sabbath day. Mm, go ahead. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. They were ashamed. Come on. And all the people rejoiced for, for all the glorious things that were done by him. All praises to the most high. So, yes, therefore, it is lawful. It's good to do well on the Sabbath. Because that's what Christ was doing. You understand? Now give me Colossians 1. You know how it goes. Because we dealt with this now in with the, um, the Messiah. They're going to say, okay. But after Christ died. You understand? So let's see what happened after Christ died. Colossians 1. Because they're going to go. This is where they go. Colossians 1 and 1. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Uh -huh. And Timotheus, our brother. Read. To the same. To the what? To the same. Read. And faithful brethren in Christ, mm. which are in Colossi. Which are in Colossi. Which are in Colossi. Mm -hmm. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so, who are the Colossians? Psalms 148, verse 14. Let's understand who is the subject. The book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. Read. He also exalted the horn of his people. Read. The praise of all his saints, mm. even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. All praises. So the saints is the 12 tribes. Colossians 1, verse 3. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 3. Mm. We, did, we give thanks to God. And the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Go ahead. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love which he had to all the saints. To all the saints, to all the twelve tribes scattered in Colossae. Okay, now Colossians 2 verse 16. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. Come on. Let no man therefore judge you in me. Mm. or in drink, mm. or in respect of an holy day. Go ahead. Or of the new moon. Oh, of the Sabbath day. You see, when you teach about the Sabbath, you see, this is where a Christian will take you. You say, you see, let no man judge you therefore. But they only focus on the Sabbath, they don't bring up the new moon. You ever notice that? Yes, sir. They never mention the new moon, they never mention any other holy day, but they will say what the Sabbath. Because they're getting cut on the Sabbath. So I say, okay, do you observe the new moon? How do you observe it? I he said no man must judge you. So how do you observe this new moon? Tell us. They are not going to tell you because they are what? They are hypocrites. Read verse 16. One more again. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. Because these men, these were the scribes and Pharisees. You understand that? These were the scribes and Pharisees. They still wanted the people to sacrifice because that's how they ate. So they were judging the people for no longer doing the sacrifices anymore. You understand that? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Oh, of the new moon. Oh, of the Sabbath day. Go ahead. Which are a shadow of things to come. Well, you see that? Which are a shadow of things to come. This is Hebrews 10, right? Go ahead. But the body is of Christ. Now, watch this. Let's get the precept. Give me Ezekiel. Ezekiel 45, verse 17. Let's see where the Apostle Paul is getting this from. Remember what he said. He persuaded them concerning Christ out of the law of Moses and in the prophets. Ezekiel 45, verse 17. The book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 45, verse 17. Come on. And it shall be the priest's part to give burnt offering. To do what now? To give burnt offering. Remember what we read. It says meat offerings, drink of, it says what? Let, go back. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 16. Come on. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. In what? In meat. That's meat offerings. Go ahead. Or in drink. Drink 
offering. That's what he, the only thing he took out of there was offering. Now go back to Ezekiel 45 verse 17. The book of Ezekiel chapter 45 verse 17. Come on, come on. And it shall be the fruit part to give bad offering mm. and meat offering. And what now? And meat offering. You can read about that in Leviticus 2. Go ahead. And drink offering. He says meat and drink. Meat and drink. Go ahead. In the feast. In the what? In the feast. The uh-huh. And in the new moon. Stop. The feast. What is it? What did he say in the in, in the New Testament? Go back. Go back. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 16. Listen good. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. That's meat offerings. Or in drink. Drink offerings. Or in respect of a holy day. What did, what did Ezekiel say? Go back. Ezekiel 45, 17. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 45, verse 17. Uh -huh. And it shall be the prince part to give bad offering and meat offering and drink offering in the feast. In the feast, the apostle Paul said, a or respect of an holy day. So Ezekiel said feasts. So when he says holy day, you know how many holy days we've got? Many. Go ahead. And in the new moon. You see the apostle Paul says what? And all oh, of the new moon. Read. And in the Sabbath. And in the what? And in the Sabbath. Go back to Ezekiel. No, it says Ezekiel says in the new moons and in the what? And in the Sabbath. And in the Sabbath. So how did we respect those holy days? How did we respect them? Under the whole covenant. How did we give respect unto those days? We offered. Drink offerings, meat offerings, and um, burnt offerings. That's how we, res we gave respect unto those days. Go ahead. In all solemn, Solem solemnities, in all solemnities of the house of Israel, go ahead. He shall prepare the sin offering, and the meat offering, and the burnt offering, Read. and the peace offering, mm. to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. Because this was all about the twelve tribes of. That's why I started in Colossians one to show you who the apostle Paul was writing to. So Ezekiel is confirming this was to what make reconciliation to the house of Israel. You understand that? So, but remember now, remember we went over the new moon? So, that's how you know how to observe it. This is all coming from what? The Sabbath day. You understand? It says in the Sabbath, we went over the Sabbath, how to observe it. Then it says what? The feast, that's holy days. Now, keep reading down. I'm going to show you some. Verse 18. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. That says the Lord God. Read. In the first month, in the first day of the month, thou shalt take Whoa, a. Oh, stop, bro, stop, stop. Verse 18 again. Read that again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, verse 18. Read. That says the Lord God. In the first month, in the first day of the month. Stop. What happens? What is that? The new moon. What is that? The Sabbath. Is a new moon and the Sabbath. Go ahead. Thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish and cleanse it the same. Time. That's how we what? That's how we gave respect unto the new moon. Read. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering and put it upon the post of the house. Read. And upon the four corners of the of the settle of the altar and upon the post of the gate of the inner court. Go ahead. And so thou shalt, and so, and so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month. And, and, and what now? And so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month. Stop. Is this what now? And so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month. What's the seventh day? The Sabbath. This is the seventh day Sabbath. Remember what we read in Numbers 28? Was some of you forgot? He says, the burnt offerings of every Sabbath. Read. For everyone that errs, mm. and for him that is simple, mm. so shall he reconcile the house. Watch this, go ahead. In the first month. Stop. Now, the first month, that's the month of Abib. Understand that. This is the month of Abib, right? The first month, the new moon. Read, watch this. In the first month, in the first 
in the 14th day of the month. Stop. What is that? The Passover. Listen, this is the, the Sabbath day, man. Read. He shall have the Passover, mm. a feast of seven days. And leavened bread shall be eaten. Stop. So, listen, man. The Sabbath day is, is a gateway to all these other feast days. You understand? Jump down to verse 25. Listen good. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. In the seventh month, in the 15th day of the month. He says, in the seventh month, what's the seventh month? Hmm? Give me Leviticus 23, 23. What, what is Ezekiel talking about when he says in the seventh month? Read that. Leviticus 23, 23. Yes, the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 23. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the fifth day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a, memor a memorial of blowing of trumpets. A what now? A memorial of blowing of trumpets. Read. And holy convocation. You see that? So the memorial of blowing of trumpets is what? Is to memorialize all the new moons of the year. You understand? Read. He shall do no Sabbath work therein. Because it's a, it's a Sabbath. Go ahead. But he shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Go back to Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, 45, 45 25. Verse 25. In the seventh month. The seventh, what is that? Hey, Shalom. Uh, it's uh, September. No, we just read it. Oh, the, the memorial of bringing of trumpets. Yeah. Okay, oh please. Read that again, verse 25. Have a seat, have a seat. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 45, verse 25. Come on. In the seventh month, mm. in the 15th day of the month. Now, what is he talking about? He says, in the seventh month, in the 15th day of the month, what must happen? Shall he do the, shall he do the like in the feast of, of, of the seventh day, according to the sin offering, according to the burnt offering, <coughs> And according to meat offering. Now, give me Leviticus 23 real quick. Yes. Read 33. Watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 33. Uh -huh. The Lord speak unto Moses, say, Read. Speak unto the children of Israel, say, The 15th day. The what? The 15th day. Come on. Of this seventh month. Of what now? Of this seventh month. Read. Shall be the feast of tabernacle mm. for seven days unto the Lord. Stop. Listen, man, the Sabbath day, the Sabbath day is a heavy day. That's why it says he was hallowed and sanctified. That's why there is no, you see why the, our people don't keep the Sabbath? That's why it, the, the Lord don't bring to their remembrance all these other feast days. Because it's a gateway to all these other feast days that the Lord ordained. Go back to Ezekiel 45, verse 25. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 45, verse 25. Uh -huh. In the seventh month, mm. in the fifteenth day of the month, Read. shall he do the like in the feast of the seventh day. Read. According to, according to the sin offering, according to the burnt offering, and according to, to the meat offering. You see that? And according to the meat offering. So you can actually put any other holy days, because he says the feasts. The Apostle Paul says, any holy day. So these holy days, you can, they will tell you, first day is a Sabbath, last day is a Sabbath. You understand? Yes, you read the feast of the Day of Atonement, it's a Sabbath. Hmm. Oh, praise to the Most High. Now, um, give me, give me the book of Acts, Acts 27 verse 9. I'm almost done. I've not been saying it, but yeah, I'm almost done. Acts 27, verse 9 and 10. The book of Acts, chapter 27, verse 9. The reason why I'm going over this is because the apostle Paul kept these high days. So was the rest of the apostles. Go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 27, verse 9. Read. Right? Now, when much, when much time was spent, mm. and when sailing was now dangerous, right? because the fast was now already passed. Because the fast! Was now already passed. The fast. Read. Paul admonished them. Read. And said unto them, Said, I perceive that this voyage will be 
will be with head and much damage. Go ahead. Not only for the lading and chief, but also of our life. So now, the, remember, the Apostle Paul was traveling. So he can what? Observe the day of atonement in Jerusalem. Now, give me Leviticus 23, 26. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 26. Watch this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, Ray. there shall be a day of atonement. There shall be what now? There shall be a day of atonement. Ray. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. Mm. And ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Go ahead. And ye shall do, ye shall do no work, in that same day. Stop. He says what? And he shall do no work in that same day. You see that? So, see, Leviticus, 20, Leviticus 23, the first feast is what? The Sabbath. So now, for you to know what must be done on the day of atonement, you afflict your soul, you fast. But also, you must understand, it's a Sabbath day too. So, but we already went over the Sabbath. So you are not confused when they talk about the day of atonement because you know, oh, it's also a Sabbath. What is the Sabbath? You know about it. Right? And you shall do no work there in, in, in that, you shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Go ahead. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Right? And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Read. He shall do no manner of work. You shall what now? He shall do no manner of work. Read. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation. In all your dwelling. Come on. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Stop. He's led, he says, it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Read. And he shall afflict your soul. Mm. And he shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, mm. from even unto even, shall he celebrate your Sabbath? Shall he say, shall he what now? Shall he celebrate your Sabbath? He's letting you know that's the Sabbath day. Because it is a Sabbath day. You understand? Now watch this. Um, give me Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. I'm almost done. 17 verse 19. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 19. Come on. That said the Lord unto me, mm. Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in, and, and by the which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem. The street corners. Go ahead. And say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye kings of Judah, and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by this gate. Right. That says the Lord, mm. take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day. You see what he said? Bear no burden on the Sabbath day. That's what we read in Nehemiah. Wait, this thing's flying here now. Okay, read that verse again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 21. That says the Lord, take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day. Right. No, bring it in the gates of in the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Come on. Neither do ye any work. Because he's letting you know this is the Sabbath. Right. But hallow ye the Sabbath day as I commanded your father. Mm. Come on. But they obeyed not. They did what? But they obeyed not. But they obeyed not unto this day. Right. Neither incline their ear, mm. but make their necks deep, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. Watch, you see that? So when they are our forefathers in Sarah 44, wise and eloquent in their instructions, where did they get the instructions from? The Bible. Being instructed out of the law. Right? And it, and it shall come to pass, if ye diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gate of the city, of this city on the Sabbath day. That's Jerusalem. Come on. But hallow the Sabbath day to do no work therein. Go ahead. Then shall they enter into the gates of this city kings and princes. When he says kings and princes, remember we had at last those kings and priests? Yes, we're reading it here. 
What is Jeremiah prophesying about it? the kingdom? He's showing our people the gateway to enter into the kingdom. The Sabbath. Read. Then shall they enter. Shall they enter. And, and wait. Not just the Sabbath. All the other commandments, by the way. Read. Then shall they enter into the gates of this city. Mm. Kings and princes. Sitting upon the throne of David. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom, man. Go ahead. Riding in chariots and on horses. You see that? The chariots and horses. What is this talk about? That's the deliverance of Israel right here. Read. They and their princes, the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. That's the kingdom. You understand? This is the kingdom right here. Read. And they shall come from the cities of Judah, and from the places about Jerusalem, and from the land of Benjamin, and from the plain, and from the mountains, and from the south, Bringing forth burnt offerings. Bringing burnt offerings. Bringing burnt offerings. Mm. And sacrifices. Mm. And meat offerings. Stop. Why did we just read this? In Ezekiel. To make reconciliation for the house of Israel. Right now, we're offering sacrifices of righteousness right now. Read. And incense. Mm. And bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. Read. But if you will not hearken unto me mm. to hallow the Sabbath day. He says, if you will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, meaning to make you keep it holy. What's going to happen? And, and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof. Read. And it shall devour the places of Jerusalem. The palaces of Jerusalem. And it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And it shall not be quenched. It shall not be quenched. So the Lord is letting us know. The reason why you're in captivity right now is because part of that, we did not want to observe the Sabbath, which is a day of rest. It's symbolic. You keep the Sabbath, you rest from all your parents, from all your several work. Remember it says what? You shall not do any several work. Because several work is done by who? Slaves. So now you what? You get rest from that. You gather yourself together in holy convocation. So you are rehearsing the righteous acts. So now when the, you get the true rest, you will have rest from all your several work. And that will be forever. You understand that, right? When he says, the Lord shall have mercy on Jacob. That's the rest. Mm. Give me that in uh, Hebrews. Hebrews 4. Verse 1. Chapter 4, Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Into his what? Into his rest. Into his rest. Read. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Because why would any of us would seem to come short of it? Because why? Just rebellion. Just like our forefathers that did not enter into the promised land. They came short of it. You know why? They did not believe. Read. For unto us was the gospel preached. For unto us was the gospel preached. Where? In the wilderness. Read. As well as unto them. Mm. But the word preached did not profit them, nor being mixed with faith in them that had of that had it. He says, not being mixed with faith in them that had it, because they had no faith. They had the word, but they had no faith in the word they received. Who are these people? Hebrews 3 verse 16, because he says, unto us was the gospel preached. So who's the us that the gospel was delivered to? Read it. The book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 16. Come on. For some, when they had had, did, did provoke, mm. how be it? Not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Because that's the, that's, these are the people that received the gospel. So the gospel didn't come during the book of Mark, Luke and John and Matthew. The gospel was given to Adam. Man. You understand that? Mm. Read. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Whom was Moses grieved 40 years in the wilderness? The Israelites. Us. We grieved Moses for 40 years in the wilderness, man. Read. Was it not with them that had seen mm. whose carcasses fell in, fell in the wilderness? Read. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? Watch this. So we see 
that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They could not enter in because of unbelief. So the apostle Paul is saying, listen, don't fall into the same trap. You understand that? Because remember, he says, this generation seeketh the sign. And they shall not sign be given to them. Because in the wilderness, when we came out of Egypt, the signs and wonders they saw. And they still rebelled and did not enter. He says, so this time, I'm giving you nothing. You understand? Hebrews 4. Read verse 3. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. Come on. For we which have believed to enter in, into rest. So if we believe. Give me that Sirach 32. 24 real quick. What does it mean to believe? Because the Christians will say. Yeah all you have to do just believe. Believe in your heart and you get saved. No. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32, verse 24. Come on. He that believeth in the Lord, mm. taketh heed to the commandments. You must keep the commandments of the Most High. Read. And he that trusted in him shall fare never the worse. Go back. Hebrews 4, verse 3 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. For we, which have believed to enter into rest. So they, those of us that believe, that keep the commandments, will enter into the rest. Read. As he said, as I have sown, I have sown in my rest. Read in my rest, come on. If they shall enter into my rest, mm -hmm. although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Read. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. You, hold on. Read verse 4 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 4. Mm. For he spake in a certain place. In a what now? In a certain place. In a what? In a certain place. Hmm. What place is this? You see, I need you to think. Think. Give me Ezekiel 20. We come coming back. <coughs> Remember, it says, on this wise. We went over this, name. Yes, when we're going one Matthew 1, 18. Yes, mm. Ezekiel 20. No, Ezekiel 20. Read verse 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 5. Come on. And say unto them, mm. that saith the Lord God, Read. in the day when I chose Israel, mm. and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, Read. and made myself known unto, unto them in the land of Egypt, Come on. when I lifted up my hand unto them, say, I am the Lord your God, mm. in the day that I lifted up my hand unto them, to bring them forth of the land of Egypt. To do what now? To bring them forth of the land of Egypt Read. into a land that I aspired for them, flowing with milk and honey. A land doing what now? Flowing with milk and honey. Read. Which is the glory of all land. Now watch this. Galatians 4.26. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 26. Come on. But Jerusalem. But what? But Jerusalem. Read. Right? Which is above is free. Mm. Which is the mother of us all. The 12 tribes of Israel. Now go back to Hebrews 4. Verse 4 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 4. Come on. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wife. Remember now. Is he, is he he's taking you back, not to the time of King Solomon and King David. Do you understand that? He is taking us back, back to the time of what? Adam. When the people lived for more than a thousand years. You understand that? He says what? Read verse 4 one more again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 4. Come on. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. On this what? On this wise. On this wise. Go ahead. And God did rest the seventh day from all his work. We see, what is this certain place? Go back to Genesis, man. He's letting you know the type of rest I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the rest of during the time of King David and King Solomon. It was only 80 years. I'm not talking about that. Read that. Genesis 2. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. 
and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. This is the certain place. Where was the Garden of Eden? That's the certain place he's talking about, man. Read. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. That's the certain place. This certain place right here, this is the place. You understand? Because Adam spoke to the most like God directly, man. So when that communication was cut, it's like, no, I'm going to move you out from this place. How dreadful is this place? This is none other than the what? The house of God. Give me the Genesis 28, read verse 12. You know what? Start verse 11. Let's see, let's see the words that's being used here. Pay close attention, man. The book of Genesis. Come on, come on. 28 verse 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 28 verse 11. Watch this. And he lightened upon a certain place. Stop. He did what? And he lightened upon a certain place. You see, the apostle Paul, man. Mm. Listen, listen, man. That's why Christians are so lost. They don't understand the apostle Paul. They shut up and sit in some corner somewhere. Read again verse 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 28, verse 11. Watch this. And he lighted upon a certain place. Oh, praise to the Most High. Go ahead. And tarried there all night, mm. because the sun was set. Read. And he took up the stones of that place. And Come on, put man. Them, and put them for his pillows. Read. And laid down in that place to sleep. In that place. <laughs> of a certain place. Read. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set upon the earth. Mm. And the top of it reached to heaven. Where the most high God of heaven and earth is. Read. And behold, the angels of God, the angels of God, ascending and descending on it. They were going up and down. Mm. Go ahead. A space bridge. You see that transformers? The dark side of the moon? You see when they came in down with the space bridge? Mm. That's what they get it from. Read. And behold, the Lord stood above it and mm. said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father. And the God of Isaac, the land where all thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Watch this. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, mm. and thou shalt spread abroad to the west. Meaning we're going to be scared. This is Deuteronomy 20, 20, 64. Read. And to the east, mm. and to the north, Go ahead. and to the south. Read. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's another precept. Go ahead. And behold. I am with thee, mm. and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest. Watch this. And will bring thee again into this land. And I will bring you again into this land. This is when the Lord is going to gather us from all the four corners of the earth, and we shall return home. Read. For I will not leave thee until I have done, I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Watch this. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. That's the certain place. Read. And I knew it not. Mm. And he was afraid and what? said, what? How dreadful is this place? How dreadful is this place? Come on. This is none other but the house of God. This is none other but the what now? But the house of God. The house of God. Read. And this is the gate of heaven. Mm. Some heavy stuff, man. Where was he at? The garden, man. Is this, this is none other than the house of God. The gate of heaven. That's mean that's where the portal is. Why do you think these nations be fighting about that land? Because they know. Mm, you understand? That's where Aram used to talk to the Lord, man. The same way the angels were up and down, he would go up and down. Like that. And Eve just came and someone had messed this whole thing up. You understand? Read on. Come on. And, jo and Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for, they put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar 
and poured oil upon the top of it. Read. And he called the name of that place Bethel. <laughs> Bethel meaning the house of God. Go ahead. But the name of that city was called Luz. Was called first. Luz at the first. Was called Luz at the first. Okay, that is on there. So, the apostle Paul, man, <coughs> look, he was heavy. Go back. Hebrews 4. Verse 4 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 4. Come on. For he spake in a certain place on the seventh day on this wine. Mm. And God, is he, he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. Read on. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Read. And in this place again. Stop. In this what? And in this place again. A what? Again. A what? Again. 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 We will return back there. In this place again. Read on, man. So, 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 you may think he's talking about during the time of King David. No. Because he takes you back to all the Genesis 2. He's taking you back there and says, you're going to return back in this place again. And this time, it's going to be forever. Because during the time of King David and King, it wasn't forever. We only ruled for eight years and that's it. We've been in captivity ever since then. You understand that? Keep reading. And in this place again, mm. if they shall enter into my rest. He says, and in this place again, if they shall what? If they shall enter into my rest. Read. See, therefore, it remaineth that some must enter therein. You see that? He says, it remaineth that some, not all Israel, no, some, the remnant of Israel, that's the sum that must enter the inn. Read. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Go ahead. Again, he limited a certain day. He says, again, again, he did what? He limited a certain day, say, mm. David. Today, for so long a time. After so long a time. Today, after so long a time. Go ahead. As it is said, mm -hmm. today, if he will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Harden her not your heart. Go ahead. For if Jesus has given them rest. If Jesus has given had given them rest. Go ahead. Then we he, he would then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. Read again the same. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. Come on. For if Jesus had given them rest, then we did not afterward have spoken of another day. Another day of rest. If Jesus had given us rest, he was not going, the Lord was not going to speak unto us of another day of rest. Another day of rest. Judges 2.21. Give me that real quick. Judges 2, verse 21. Yes, the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 21. Come on. I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua, Joshua left when he died. When what now? Which Joshua left when he died. When Joshua left when he died. Now hold this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Yes. Sarak 46 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 46 verse 1. Listen good. Jesus the son of Jesus the son of Nave. The Jesus the son of Nave. Jesus the son of Nave. Who is this Jesus? This is Joshua. Joshua the son of Nun. This is in Greek. Read. Jesus, the son of Nave, was violent in the wars. Was valiant in the wars. Was valiant in the wars. Read. Really? And was the successor of Moses in prophecy, mm. who, according to his name, was made great for the saving of the elect of God. For the saving of the elect of God. Come on. And taking and taking vengeance of the enemies that rose up against them. Well, what did he do after that? Go, go ahead. That he might set Israel in their inheritance. That's the answer right there. You see the answer? Go back. Hebrews. No, no, no. Joshua. I mean, Judges 2. Verse 21. Hmm. 
the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 21. Come on. I also will have fought, drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. You see that? So, the Lord was not going to speak of another day of rest if Joshua had given us rest at that time. Get it? Yes, sir. Right? That through them I may prove Israel mm. whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein, right? as their fathers did keep it or not. Come on. Therefore, the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily. Right? Neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. You see that? So Jesus is Joshua. So go back. Hebrews 4. Verse 8 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. Come on. For if Jesus had given them rest. Who's Jesus now? Right? Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? The he is the Lord. Has Joshua given us rest when he gave, gave us the inheritance? The Lord was not going to talk to us uh, of another day of rest. Right? There remaineth therefore a rest. A what? A rest. There remaineth therefore a what? A rest. Come on. To the people of God. To the people of God. Come on. For he that is entered into his rest, mm -hmm. he also has peace from his own works. Go ahead. As God did from his. You own see that? Genesis 2. Mm. As God did from his. So we also must what? We also must enter into his rest. That another day of rest. Give me that in First Peter 3, verse 8. You see, some of you went over this at camp. Now you forgot. You don't remember it. First Peter. Is it First Peter? No, Second Peter 3. Verse 8. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. Read. But beloved. Be not ignorant of this one thing, mm. that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. So that's the day of rest. When we will be in with the Lord for a thousand years. After that, then the engine of days be showing up. Mm. It says on that day, nothing going to be moving upon this earth, man. Everybody going to be quiet. Especially the black woman. <laughs> she going to be quiet on that day. She's not going to say nothing. She's going to be talking back. You speak, sister, you dead. And it's not going to be the common type of death. Mm -mm. we all going to witness it on that day. You understand that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for that thing, man. Mm. Read it again. Second Peter 3, verse 8. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. Read but beloved, mm. be not ignorant of this one thing. Of this one thing. Come on. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Read. And a thousand years as one day. So if they remain it there for another day, this is the day that will launch us into what? Everlasting life. Because a thousand years is not everlasting life. You understand that? Yes, sir. A thousand years is not everlasting life. It is not. Because, mm, man, this is heavy. Think about it now. Should I go there? Let me go there. Give me. Yeah, give me Genesis 5 verse 27. The book of Genesis chapter 5 verse 27. Man, this Bible is beautiful. Read verse 27. The book of Genesis chapter 5 verse 27. Listen good. And all the days of Methuselah were 959 years. 969 years. Go ahead. And he died. Stop. You, you see? He couldn't even reach the thousand. That's why it says, of a certain place. He was saying, listen, had we not did the demonic stuff, we were going to reach a thousand men and now live forever. Get it? Yes, sir. Oh, they missed it. They missed it, man. Read the Bible again, Second Peter 3, verse 8. I'm going go, to go, go over it again, and after if you don't get it, that's it. Now read that. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. Read. But beloved, 
Be not ignorant of this one day, mm. that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. One day is with the Lord as a what? As a thousand years. Read. And a thousand years as one day. Now, so, so, our, the generations of old, they almost fulfilled that one day. You understand? Sure. Who was the example? Methuselah, our forefather. He almost reached a thousand. It was 969. You understand that? Yes, so, so, had he reached a thousand, guess what? You know what was going to happen? There wouldn't be a need for all this. So now the Lord says, I've spoken of another day in this certain place. Back to Genesis. Not during the time of King David and King Solomon. Back to Genesis. I'm going to take you back to the beginning. How things were supposed to be. Hey, did you reach that thousand? What was going to happen? You, you understand that? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yeah. Genesis 5, 27. Genesis chapter 5, verse 27. Come on. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. And he died. And he what? And he died. Now. Go back to um, Hebrews 4, verse 8. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 8. For if Jesus had given them rest, mm. then we did not afterward have spoken of another day. Of another day. Another day. One day is with the Lord as a what? So why would, he, why would there be a need for him to speak of another day of rest? Why would there be a need? Remember, the first day of we couldn't even fulfill it. Keep it. There remain a devil a rest to the people of God. They remain a devil. That means there must still be another. That's why he kept saying again in this place. Again. Which place? How dreadful is this place? That's the place, man. Read. For he that is entered into his rest, mm. he also has been has deceased from his own works, as God did from his. You see, now read verse 10 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest. For he that is entered into his rest. Go ahead. He also. He also, he also, come on. Has ceased from his own works. He, he also, he sees from his own works. Go ahead. As God did from his. As God did from his. Get it? Who entered into his rest? Christ! <sighs> Woo! Man, this is him. Because he that is entered into his rest, remember, says, when the Son of Man will be glorified. He lives forever now. You understand that? Yes, sir. Hmm. Go ahead. He also what? For he that is entered into his rest, he also has seized from his own works. He also sees from his own works. As what? As God did from his. Hmm. Give, me, give me Revelation 20 verse 5. I told you. I'm not going back there. Revelation 20 verse 5. Watch this. The book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 5. Mm. But the rest of the day live not again until the thousand years were finished. You see, those were not those that were not part of the first resurrection. He says they live not again. Meaning what? They're only going to be woken up after a thousand years. That another day that we read about. Once the, the other the another day is fulfilled, because Methuselah almost did it. But it was gonna go against the prophecy, man. Read. This is the first resurrection. This is the what? This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. Mm. Mm. Man, this book is beautiful. Go ahead. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Read. On such, the second death has no power. You see that on such, the second death has no power. Read. But 
they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. That's it. That's it. They shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, what happens? Keep reading. And when the thousand years are expired, mm. Satan will be loosed out of his prison. Read. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Read. Gog and Magog to gather, to gather them together to battle. Mm -hmm. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Because the white men will be released, will be loosed. A thousand years they're going to be slaves. We're going to be enjoying our kingdom. When the Lord is prepping us to meet the ancient of days after a thousand years. So, which means Methuselah and them, he almost did it, man. Yeah, I know this is some heavy, this is meat stuff. Meat, meat, meat. Yeah, I don't need to go anymore. I'm gonna mess this up. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, give me Matthew 4 17. I'm gonna close it with this. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17. Come on. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Re Repent. Do what? Repent. Come on. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You understand? Another day of rest, man. Once we reach that, that was blessed is he that is passed to part of the first resurrection. Because the second death had no what? Had no power. Okay. I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. Man, man all praises to the most high God of heaven and earth. Man. All praises.